It's time for Mac Break Weekly. I am so glad Renee Ritchie, Andy Anako, and Lori Gill are here to explain the mind-boggling number of changes, the new features to iOS 14, to Mac OS 11, Big Sur, but most importantly, the transition from Intel to Apple Silicon. This might be the biggest week in Apple history, and we're going to lay it all out for you next on Mac Break Weekly. Mac Break Weekly comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but aren't your employees LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether they're working in the office or remotely. Visit LastPass.com slash Twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 719, recorded Tuesday, June 23rd, 2020. Jiggle Mode. This episode of Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by Roman. Skip the waiting room and awkward face-to-face. -face. Get ED medication conveniently delivered to your door in discreet, unmarked packaging. Go to GetRoman.com slash MacBreak for a free online visit and free two-day shipping. And by Molecule. Molecule is reimagining the future of clean air, starting with the air purifier. It's not just an innovation on existing technology, but a scientific breakthrough in air purification. For 10% off your first air purifier order, visit Molecule.com and enter the code MACBREAK10. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the most important Mac Break Weekly of the last <laughs> 35 years. And I welcome you, Leo Laporte here. Andy Anako is joining us from WGBH Boston. And, of course, really from Mac Break Weekly. He also does this <laughs> Android thing called Material. I'm not going to go into it in great detail. If you're an Android <laughs> fan, you probably should check it out. I'm bringing, I'm bringing down the system from within. That's always been my goal. <laughs> Relay.fm. That's Renee Ritchie's laugh. Yay, Renee Ritchie's back from uh, Renee Ritchie. Uh, YouTube.com <laughs> slash Renee Ritchie. Great to see you, Renee. I bet you had a lot of thoughts. A lot so of thoughts things, yeah. after yesterday. So many things. We're going to talk. And, of course, Lori Gill is here from imore.com. She's managing editor there. Hi, Lori. Hi. <laughs> We're all over. So excited. Yeah, we're all a little overwrought. <laughs> we're all a little excited. Uh, first of all, let's get this out of the way. You already know it probably. Uh, it was funny. The day before the keynote, Sunday, John Prosser, Mark Gurman, uh, another Apple rumor guy, all said no new hardware. It was clear somebody from Apple called them one by one and said, <laughs> no, no, but nobody from Apple called them. <laughs> there was planning. No, if it was a, if it was a Wall Street, if it if it had run in Bloomberg, if it had run in Wall Street, if it had been like BuzzFeed News, like if Walt Mossberg had tweeted it, but uh, let's just say it got out, like it, it, got, it got out, out earlier. That, that I weekend think it was in Apple's interest, though, to say ahead of time, look, this is not going to be about new hardware. Uh, not even Apple tags, <laughs> um, yeah. mm -hmm. although there was some Apple tag news, so we'll get we'll get to well, that. There, there was a new Mac Mini, kind of Leo. I mean, it was that was new hardware. Yeah, that was. Yeah, you're yeah. right. We Very, have a new computer, but you can't buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I, w I actually uh, I, I went over uh, my developer account to see if I could get one because it'd be fun to have. But uh, you have to tell them what app you're going to write with it and all that stuff. And I didn't want to lie. That would just. Be <laughs> Do you remember Steve when he's like, and he introduced that cheese grater with the um, with the Pentium chip in it, and he's like, "And we're going to want them back. We don't want them floating around out there. Yeah. We're going to get them back." And that's the same thing with this. You don't own it. You rent it. Five hundred dollars though, which is not bad. It's part of the Universal App Quick Start program and the Developer Transition Kit. What's interesting is it's an iPad Pro with a little more RAM. Yeah, <laughs> and some different ports. You, you ports. that too. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's. I'm, I'm sure we'll get into it later. But that started me thinking that. So, what's stopping me from being able to uh, install macOS on a brand new iPad? You're, uh, you're, 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 you're <laughs> Apple. You're essentially telling me that a lot, most of what I need is already available well, in a MacBook. Well, jailbreak in a dream, Andy. A jailbreak <laughs> in a yeah. dream. I do think it's a RAM <laughs> issue, but we'll, we'll get to that. So, uh, the key here, though, is. Um, that they did, and they revealed this later, the whole keynote, all of the Big Sur demos, all of the Mac demos on this. 
and yeah. it looked perfectly normal. Shades Nobody's, of Intel again, right? Yeah, nobody yep. said, uh, oh, boy, that looks sluggish. None of that. They then later uh, ran uh, <laughs> Maya and Final Cut. They said Final Cut's ready. They said Logic is ready. They showed off Lightroom. Lightroom. Uh, Adobe's been working on it. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, kind of. Yeah. As, yeah. <laughs> I have to say, uh, some of that stuff didn't look great, but, you know, I mean... This is this isn't even. It was emulated 1080p on, yeah. a, on an iPad chip. Yeah. I mean, this isn't even close to what they're going to release. So, yeah. And as we suspected, not one word about not. They didn't mention the ARM word at all. It's Apple Silicon. <laughs> they're moving from uh, Intel to Apple you Silicon. Know, I went back and looked, and Steve Jobs never said x86 or mentioned any instruction sets. He's like, it's Intel because he knew that was a name everyone would recognize from Wintel's monopoly or duopoly or whatever it was at the time. And it's just that's the marketing term. And I think for Apple, it's a arm, and 90% of the casual viewers would say, what? Like mm -hmm. an arm? Yeah. And this is just like, oh, my iPhone and iPad chip. That's great. I love those. I think there's also, also a reason not to say arm because arm has maybe a bad reputation among people who've tried, for instance, Windows on ARM, it's it's felt sluggish, and I, so I think they just well, don't. It's well, not ARM. It's their not just, not just that. Make their own chips, yeah. yeah. Yeah, not, not just that, but it also underscores that this is our own technology. We're not just jumping on this arm bandwagon. Right. Of this. We are, it, it, and uh, no one cares what the what the letters on the chip are. They just care about what do I get from this, and why should I not be scared? And I think that Apple uh, really did address both of those during the keynote yesterday. Lori, what is elegant? Are you though? excited? <laughs> are you run? Are you gonna get a DTK, man? No, for the for similar reasons to you, I don't have an an app to develop on right. it, so right. I would just want it just to you know to run it and see how it works. But I have been running Mac OS, and it does give you a hint at the future of an an Apple Silicon Mac for sure, just visually. So oh, I should you know. point that out, and I don't. Uh, we should see a show of hands. Developer versions of the new iOS, iPad OS, TV OS, Watch OS, and uh, OS 11 uh, are all of were all available day of. Uh, who it, you installed it, Lori? All mm -hmm. of them? Yeah. What did you install? Uh, I haven't gotten to Apple Watch yet, but that's just because my spare <laughs> Apple Watch wasn't charged yet, so I'm getting there. But everything. Oh, and I haven't gotten to Apple TV yet. It's just a matter of the time that it takes, especially the, uh, I always have trouble with Mac OS installing it because I partition my hard drive this time. I, I made a, a volume on my MacBook Pro. So it, it always takes a while. You have to delete things and redo them. So right now I've got them on three things, iPad, iPhone, and Mac. Well, that's interesting. So you could use disk utility, create an APFS volume, mm -hmm. not touch uh, your existing you Catalina, right, and install right. it into that volume. And now mm -hmm. if you wanted to, it's a dual boot, right? You could boot into exactly. Big Sur. Yep. Oh, I might mm -hmm. try that because I, I I have to, uh, Renee, what did you install? Did you install them all? I, I installed, uh, so the only, yes, I installed it all and I installed them on my daily drivers because no matter what the pain, <laughs> I feel like I'm just not going to use them enough, like to be honest about them if no, I don't got, put them yeah, yeah, where I'm right. always using that's them, fair. except I didn't put it on my Final Cut editing machine because like <laughs> the, I know the people who do that, like people like Martin, yeah, like, like Safe Solver, they do that. And they're like, it's fine, but then maybe beta two happens or beta four happens. Right. And like last year, you just couldn't launch it under beta four, you know, so it's like it wouldn't run. So I, I, I put that on a, I was lucky enough, I had a second computer here. I put it on that just so I could play with it. But otherwise, I vastly prefer putting them on my, my daily drivers. Yeah, that makes sense. Andy, Andy did you install, uh, you don't have an i. well, maybe you do have an iPhone. I don't no. know. What no, I, I do. I, I installed it on one of my older iPhones. Uh, I have not installed it on my iPad Pro yet. I have not. Uh, installed it on one of my old Macs yet. That's coming later this week. A lot, of, a lot, of, a lot of last night was. I, I okay. I, I will admit something. I did decide to social distance, and so while the keynote was streaming, I was actually at the town beach. However, <laughs> so I you saw because, you on Twitter, you hours of work. Yourself, because sir. as you well know, <laughs> when Apple's got an event. They vacate the beaches. There's no one there. It's great. Exactly. You can have the beach to yourself. Yeah. It's just the Microsoft people and Andy. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but so so yeah, so I, I decided what what I what what was uh what was the easiest to install, what had some of the most interesting things and it was and unfortunately I didn't have the wherewithal at the moment to suddenly sacrifice one of my Macs to the beta gods or the the, the dev gods. <laughs> uh but that but the, the, I have to say that that's it really is a tie uh, for first place between things I'm excited to try on the iPhone and things I'm really excited to see uh live click and drag on the on the Mac because that was again we'll talk about all this stuff in depth but that was a huge leap forward for the Mac yesterday uh, and for iOS to be honest um, so I didn't install any of it because I'm not crazy although Micah <laughs> bricked his I iPad Pro and had to do a DFU Oops. did get it working but okay. that's an important caution. I feel like this fortune is a doesn't risky thing shine do. on Micah when it comes to things like yeah, this. Before yeah. Poor Micah. He's had problems before. <laughs> and I'm not going to even take a chance. I'll consider it public betas next month. Maybe when the yeah. public beta, if I don't and hear too many And watch for the howls. first time. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we've always said public they're not going to Public beta gonna, for watch. They're not going to do public betas for the watch because there's no easy way to roll back. But mm -hmm. I guess they feel fairly confident. There's going to be I an wonder, iPhone soon enough, but you won't be able to roll back either, so they might as well get their feet back. Yeah. I, we got so much to talk about. I, there's no way we're going to get this all in. So I'm going to start. <laughs> let's start with ARM because I'm sorry, Apple Silicon, because I think that is a huge story. But I do not want to downplay what happened to iOS 14 because honestly, th that's j just as big. It's been a long time since Apple changed Springport. And this, this, this user interface is exciting. Maybe what didn't happen to iPad OS 14, by contrast. Yeah. Yeah, isn't that interesting? I also mm -hmm. feel yeah. like uh, there, even though there isn't a convergence of all the platforms, one line in that speech kind of was a big eye-opener when they said, and oh, by the way, your iOS app should run without modification on an, an well, Apple Did you Silicon watch State of device. the Union, Leo? Did you yeah. watch the State of the Union We streamed afterwards? both, When they yeah. showed... When they showed read all documents, yes. and they're like, if you've made a good iPad app, by the way, you get resizing, you get multiple yes. windows, you get, yeah. you yes. get dark mode. And I was like, wow. Okay. I have to say the and one thing. And then an extra thing, bit, you get Catalyst. You know, the like, one wow. thing I installed was uh, uh, Xcode 12. <laughs> I am very, I'm very judicious, but I did install that because I really, uh, you know, Swift UI is very interesting. I wanted to play yeah. with it and I did really, I'm starting to think. I'm not a fan of uh, uh, hardware-dependent development. I, when I write code, I like to write it so it runs everywhere, uh, which means I don't do GUIs most of the time. And if I do, they're crap because you can't do cross-platform GUIs very well. But I like the coding part. I like the solving problems part. I don't. But I have to say, if you could write an app that would run on an iPhone, an iPad, and a Mac, yeah, you've got a really interesting market there for you. It's it's also raises a lot of questions about what Apple sees the Mac being or the platform being in the next five years. That that really did take me by surprise. It's technically we would have all guessed that that was feasible, but the idea of blurring that line for consumers about saying that uh, there is there is now no longer necessarily a hard divider between iOS apps and Mac apps. If you if there's an app you like on your phone and you think it runs, it just by all, by all means install it on your Mac, it'll be good. It'll be the exact same experience. But that, that last bit always kind of gets me worried because it shouldn't be the same kind of experience. It should you should be losing something by going from a the a the device that this was specifically targeted to to something that it was not specifically targeted to. And by that I mean that there should some things that shouldn't if if it's just as elegant on a Mac as it is on a multi-touch device, then that multi-touch interface that the, you've come up with isn't that good. Similarly, if you've put it if you copy it onto a Mac and you don't really notice that you're missing anything that you would from a competing desktop app, then that's some extra overhead that you're not really using. That's some extra advantage you're not using, and that and I and I admit that this could be just as much an uh, an admission that. Apple and its developers are doing genius work creating very full-featured apps that work no matter what context they're in. But as someone who's who still has the keychain tool for taking for for uh, for unhooking an Apple Disk Two drive from an app from an Apple Two E, <laughs> it, uh, it's the sort of thing I naturally sort of worry about. So it'll be this is going to be a fun next couple of years to watch for sure. Uh I don't. I don't even know where to begin. I, I guess that's a good as a good place to start as any is. What is the, what is the future of 
the platform, the whole th kitten the ecosystem, Google, yeah, the ecosystem. Yeah. So, what, I mean, one my of the things is, I, they were so I, worried. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, uh, for a long time, people have been worried, and rightly so, that the Mac is going to become iOS. And I think when people say that, they talk about it, they, they think about it in terms of an open computing environment, a platform where it, most recently it ran Unix you know, under the seams. It had a beautiful GUI on top, and you could boot camp into Windows and do all your web development and all these things. And it worked like everyone who grew up with a traditional computer assumed it to work. And they saw iOS as sort of this lockdown gatekeeper, not even gatekeeper, lockdown, restricted, only App Store environment. But I think where Apple has been going is that once the technology stack is the same, you know, they can they can open or close different valves. But once the the uh, the interface, the conventions are similar for people who aren't sophisticated, there's no distinction. The plumbing is irrelevant to them. They just know they have a mail app and a mail app and a Safari and a Safari and the things look the same and behave the same. And we're never getting an Instagram app for the Mac. But look, I can just launch the iPhone <laughs> version. And it for them, for this vast majority of consumers, 80, 90 percent who aren't the really loud ones on Twitter, you know, they for them, it, it just it makes the the Mac a much more accessible computing platform for them. Mm. The, the the fear, though, because that sounds really great on the surface and for everybody who's not, you know, us right here in this room, you know, there's a lot of people that this is that's a great thing. It's easier to use. It's you know, it reminds them of the iPad they use or reminds them of the iPhone they use. But I do, I did, I'm getting the tingle on the back of my neck right now of like, is is this where we're going? Are we dumbing down the Mac? And no. I have always felt that that's not what Apple is doing. And it's not what we want. And it's yeah. not, it's definitely not what we want, but I'm seeing, what I'm seeing now does actually create a little fear in me that I didn't have yes. before, which is this um, language this design language across the board is start starting to like really seep into what are they going to take away on the Mac in the future? For example, the, you know, the harder it is to get a, a you know, to load a Mac and Mac app that's not from the app store, it's get, it gets harder and harder. You know, there's yeah. new, you know, Let uh, me certificates you. and things. Let me reassure <laughs> okay. you. I think this is the best possible news for those of us who love the Mac. Uh, and I think even in the State of the Union, they—I mean—they showed Linux running in hypervisor mode. Yeah. On on, I think they understand that there is a small but vital audience for traditional computing experience on the Macintosh, and I think that they've dodged the bullet here. Remember Phil Schiller saying, "Will Mac OS and iOS merge?" No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think that you're going to see. I was worried more, frankly, that Mac OS would be eclipsed. That computing, that Apple's vision for computing mm. was iPad. And I, I really think that this is clear now that Apple can create this beautiful, rich, diverse ecosystem. The problem was things like the Mac Pro were so niche, they couldn't make many, they couldn't sell many. And that made me scared. When I saw the revenues for Macs going down, that made me scared. It'd be like mm. XServe, right? This changes yeah. that because now it's part of a continuum. It's not just off in the corner. There's a continuum. Did you notice, of, Leo? Go ahead. That they they I don't know if they came out right and said it, but the, the hypervisor support looks like it's being built into the silicon. Exactly. So that it will. It, it's not just that. Oh, you can run a VM. It's like no, no. Parallels. Docker. They did say you, it. And the yeah, reason okay. they said that sure is because it's it built not. into the silicon and Intel. And so there is a, a, a number of people, DevOps, sys, sysadmins, people yeah. like that, who are saying, well, now I'm not going to be able to use a Mac anymore if mm. you're – but that solved that yeah, problem. Fine. Hypervisor fine. is very Linux. important. Go ahead. Yep. Yeah. That, that, and I, I was very, very pleased that – I know they're talking to a developer conference, uh, audience of developers, but that they specifically said, and by the way, run run Linux. That's fine. Run alongside Mac apps. That's they fine. They didn't mention the Windows. End. There won't be a boot camp, yeah. I predict. They weren't <laughs> able to mention yeah. – Win. my understanding is that that's a whole – partnership microsoft oh. has to be on board yeah they of. did they mention microsoft just... in fact microsoft's already yeah. got uh, office yeah. apps yeah, ported. Office apps. But yeah. parallels parallels they showed parallels running linux but parallels does not make money running linux right <laughs> so it's, it's so in everyone's no best interest to I got it. like they're not going to yeah. announce it yet but i believe it's in everyone's best interest to get that solved quickly. and windows does run on arm microsoft makes windows on arm so it's not like yeah. they don't it's have good. that it's this this could be the first computer that actually runs windows on arm in a pleasing way so <laughs> like, that's good to be a shot in the arm for windows but but you do i mean you, you, you these are all really good points the, the things that are still kind of in my worry queue are uh, are 
I, I part of the uh, conversation about the redesign of uh, of the Mac OS's look and feel was that it's a very it's a cleaner it's a simplified design and that's again one of my little trigger phrases saying well look I've got this huge screen in front of me I'm not saying I'm not saying go like the Windows Windows uh, uh, Microsoft Office 6 route and just put every single ribbon bar and every <laughs> single button bar up the there ribbon. but it's really uh, there, there are times where I'm using a, a really complicated app like Photoshop or a video editing app where I don't know how to do a cut or I don't know how to do a dissolve until I look around and I actually see the button for it right there pinned to the side of my window. Um, and the other thing that uh, that gets me a little bit worried is is uh, the reason why I still am running the next to the newest version of Mac OS on my real machine is that I'm still concerned about sandboxing. Sandboxing is very much uh, – uh, a what Apple considers like a very very positive and important f future looking technology to make sure that code running in one box can't run uh, can't interfere or observe or manipulate anything that's running any anywhere else. But I'm concerned if uh, things get so tightened down in Big Sur that the uh, the video transcoder app that I love from five years ago won't run because someone did it sort of as a as a hobby project they're not interested in creating an app store version of it and app and these this two thousand dollar computer i bought is not going to be able to run a an app that apple hasn't either blessed or doesn't come from the app store uh, directly this is my biggest worry that apple will will uh, go the ios route and say that you can't run any app on a mac under a mac os that it does not come from the app store it doesn't matter if you trust it doesn't matter if it's been signed by us we're not we're shutting that down completely I've, I've always worried about that. I, I, I think this is the best evidence that that's not going to be the case. They were also very I'm, good to I'm reassure hopeful. people really they quickly out of the gate because a people. bunch of people yes, came yeah. on on Twitter immediately going, is it Mac App Store only? And everyone kept saying, no, no, no it's not no. Mac App Store only. Yeah. And in fact, you can still do Kext. I, I don't know how much longer that's going to be. Well, that, that was going to bring that up. Yeah. They're talking about kernel extensions. Yeah. They say, we don't like yeah. them, but you can still do them. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think that this is Apple's very much Apple acknowledging and maybe it was more from the State of the Union, but very much acknowledging yeah. the market and the importance. You know, it's going to support containers uh, too, and that you know, Docker. It, you're right, Renee. They could. There must have been a reason they couldn't mention Windows, because there's a new boot camp icon. Boot camp runs under yeah. uh, OS 10, OS 11. Um, so yeah. I, I, <laughs> it's going to take a while. <laughs> I, 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 know it is. Uh, I, I think that Apple. I to me, what they showed. And it's the ultimate reassurance, Lori, and that's why, because I have your, I have that same concerns, and, and same yeah. as you, Andy. Yeah. I've been talking about this for years, but I think they actually showed us the good news, and and it, and there's no need for them to do that anymore, right? Because they've got this continuum, yeah. so a, a user could choose what they want, but you can be sitting on a Mac running an, an iOS app, and there's lots of them you might want to run. Uh, you can develop. You can run containers. You can you can run uh, uh, emulation. I think this is the best of all worlds. Yeah. And the thing they also the emphasized again and again is power, power, power. You heard that word many, many yeah. times. Yeah. That mm -hmm. don't worry, we're going to be able to make very powerful uh, machines. Now I want to point yeah. out we had a little bet going. I don't know if you knew about it, but we <laughs> had a little bet going uh, about how long this transition was going to take. And I think they they split down the middle because. They said two years. But Ming-Chi Kuo says this year there'll be a 13-inch uh, MacBook Pro. Yeah. That seems reasonable. That sounds about right. Not a MacBook Air, not a MacBook, a MacBook Pro. And that all, Ming-Chi Kuo could be wrong, just a rumor, all of the Macs shipping in 2020. One would but have don't you think this is a parallel? Because like, Steve Jobs said two years, and they it shipped the MacBook year. Pro and an iMac that first year, yeah, which is what's rumored to be shipping now. Yep. And then it, yep. it took like just under a year. Yep. So I think this is like Scotty from think. the Enterprise, where you over you over promise, <laughs> so you under promise, over deliver, because that's how you get your reputation as a miracle worker. Yep. And I and mm -hmm. I think that there was <laughs> a lot of uh, impetus to do that because of the slow transition of 64 bit that bit them in the butt. But there's so many apps that yeah. don't run on Catalina. They realize you drag it out developers go yeah yeah I'll, I'll get to that uh you make this very exciting you give them lots of incentive and you say and it's going to happen fast i thought it was weird that they said why do you think they said this and we have still have intel max in the pipeline because it's true and it's what happened with steve yep. in power pc too they had several power pc computers that they still needed to ship and you Who's don't want to buy that 
there are people who well, are very established in their production workflows who they are not going to go anywhere near uh, an Apple Silicon Mac for a year or two until they see okay. exactly how Final Cut is running. So exactly it's reassuring pre-press. Reassur it. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And they did just do a very expensive Mac Pro. I'd be really pissed if I bought that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They want to make sure that that those Mac, those Intel Mac Pro people don't get angry that there were so any. Pissed. That was the last yeah. one. People want the best but, Intel. But, they don't want the worst ARM. They want the best Intel, and that's what they're these are right now. Right. I I I like the way Apple has. So in this very short timeline of two years and possibly less than two years, that we're that all Macs, uh, the Mac lineup will will move to ARM. That they're also including a lot of tools to help developers and to help users. Um, if that if that app doesn't actually support ARM yet, so there's you know the um, Rosetta uh, the two, virtualization the, Rosetta yeah, two yeah. and um, Universal two. These are these are all tools that help either a developer to quickly transition or help us as a user to get a translated app. So I think that's a great way to let app developers know that we understand this is happening fast. Um, and if you can't get to it in time, yeah. we've got some options. They for even you. said they're going to continue yeah. to support Intel for many years. But uh, yeah. I, I do think it was telling that they named it Rosetta 2 and Universal Binary <laughs> because I think that's to also reassure you. You know, we've done this yeah. before. Uh, yeah, it works yeah, pretty sure, well. Yeah. What is what is going to happen to Coco? Are we a lot of a lot of yeah, yeah, a, a lot of pain to developers that had they who felt as though they have a, they, we have to hold on to this part of our code that still uses Cocoa for whatever reason. I, I really think that I think that Apple's going to try to kill it as quickly as possible. I, I don't I mean, think if you're get, using. I, don't know. I have to say, I sat down. If you're using Swift, you're golden. If well, you did you see Ali wasn't doing Coco, wasn't doing AppKit in, yeah. um, instead of the yeah, Union? Yeah. It's, so, yeah. And he's the AppKit guy. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you got to be using Swift UI. You got to be on Swift. But if you are, you're golden. Now, I don't know what percentage of developers have made that move. But wasn't it interesting how they sort of boiled the water for you there? They're like, if you've made a first class iPad app, it'll just run. Yep. It'll run beautifully on the Mac. Yep. But then if you do that one little extra step of clicking that catalyst box and making a few tweaks, you can make it a really good Mac app. And then you and you can make it native. And, you, like, and it's, it's like very easy me. steps. Because what, what do you need catalyst for now? To to make it the like to give it the Mac style Mac sidebar to to, yeah. to customize the menu bars yeah to control the and so they give and the new Catalyst version of Catalyst has pixel by pixel control for right. developers now so it basically becomes a library so that you add you can add Macish features but it's I have a to core say, code within like different interfaces for the different platforms it's for a developer this is a very positive story if you're modern. It's not great if you're, yeah. you know, you're doing QuickBooks, but you know, if, if, <laughs> if your carbon code is still, <laughs> yeah, it's not great. Okay, and, carbon, you know, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but uh, I think if you're a developer and you jumped on the Swift bandwagon and you're interested in Swift UI and you started to use that, boy, there were the demos they did. I mean, making a widget. All the widgets, right? They, like they're all they're all cross-platform Swift UI code. So you make one widget and you adjust them, and they're on every platform. It's gorgeous. Yeah. So if yeah. you understand that development mode, if you're comfortable with that, and I have to think that's most of the apps Apple wants anyway. I don't know if it's Microsoft, but obviously that's that's been done. Um, mm -hmm. th then you're going to be, it's going to be, it should be pretty, it looks pretty easy for you. Yeah, again, it's the, it's the edge cases that will really get you, though, and that's why I don't right. like the term edge case because it, it seems to indicate, oh, well, you're you're all freaks out there. There are uh, there are <laughs> apps with ten with ten years of development behind them, and the reason why they might still have some older code with them, the, or the reason course, why they haven't been yeah. rebuilt from the ground up using modern Apple technologies, is because uh, Apple has not delivered to them a, a resource that will actually make the app work the, the way they want to. And we get back to sandboxing. So many older apps where they could count on be able to find well we need to find this one folder somewhere on the mac so we can do this really useful thing for the user but now sandboxing isn't letting us do that the way that we want it to do or the, i want to manipulate I, I, my I, uh, my scientific notation app has uh, text manipulation needs that aren't covered by the standard system that's why we spent a lot of money six years ago to create a whole library to do that and now none of that code is going to be approved by the app store so that's why there's for a lot of uh, it's uh, I, th I think we talked about this uh, <laughs> on, uh, on twitter a couple 
couple days ago that if you ju if it's the odd situation where the people who started learning coding like two years ago when they were 13 or 14 <laughs> in many cases have a big leg up on the people who have like degrees in computer science and have been doing it uh, supporting the Mac since the 68,000 days because if you started a couple years ago doing nothing but let's do it Apple has given us so many easy tools that make really powerful apps so that all I have to think about is what specifically my app has to do and I all I have to do is just support all these wonderful uh, resources that Apple's given me. If you've done that, oh my God, it really is just touch a button and you're done. But there are going to be some older apps where a lot of uh, where if your roadmap for the rest of the year was this is the year that I finally add cross network support for whatever you have to erase that from the dry erase board and say we to this year our goal is to make sure we do we have a version of this app that will actually be accepted by the App Store. So there's some question in the chat room, and I. I I think I know the answer, but I'm going to ask you, are they going to do the same chips for iPads that they do for Macs? No. No. Yeah. No, it's, it's a new all family. Apple chips. Silicon. It'll be an Apple. Yes. And I imagine the differences you'll see will be multi core, higher clock speeds, uh, bigger GPUs. The yeah. GPUs yep. are going to be very interesting. Neural engines, particularly. By the yeah. way, now you see why metal mm -hmm. was so important and why Apple went. Oh, oh, when NVIDIA said, yeah, we're yeah. not going to develop for this anymore. <laughs> oh, um, okay, fine. <laughs> well, can you imagine, like, the constraint on AMD for the, for the last few years has been money. Like, they have they put so much money into doing Ryzen and Threadripper that only now do they have the money to start doing um, the RDNA and the Navi 2 architecture that's competitive, again, with Intel. And Qualcomm literally can't afford to make watch silicon because they have to sell chip by chip. Apple's budget is... You know, they make their money on the whole device. The budget, budget is here infinite. Go ahead, say it's yeah. limitless. And if they say you have five years to make a card that's better than whatever the 680 is going to, the 6080 is going to be from Intel in five years, that's a good team to put on that problem. Yeah, yeah. I I think Apple has the talent. There's no question about it, and they have the will and they have the market uh, to just eat it up. Yeah. And I have to say, the only thing that scares me is that this stuff is too good, and it's going to—we're we're really at a risk of a monoculture because the Apple ecosystem is now going to be so dominant. There is a problem, though, like you, like people like Brianna Wu and, and, and a couple other people have been pointing out that it's once again Apple targeting their customers. And every time they do that, more and more customers fall by the side. Like already, a hardcore gamers don't use Mac. They Even if you have a MacBook Pro you love, you have a PC gaming rig. And especially if you want to do VR, you have a PC gaming rig. And a lot of hobbyist computers have been leaving the Mac because they stopped you know, they were originally a very Unixy Mac by necessity, and they've slowly, you know, stopped automatically supporting the projects. And they got rid of things like 32-bit apps, which you could say that people had all the time in the world to support. But they still want to run the things that need those, whether they're audio plugins or they're like the level builder or they're, you know, things from Valve. They, they just need 32-bit support. And they're building Linux boxes now. So it, it's going to be very good. Um, and I'm totally stealing this line. Uh, it's going to be very good for the people who already... <laughs> have the same priorities that Apple has, but it's going to increasingly knock people off the size of the cliff who don't have those yeah. same priorities. I think that gamers are not big Apple fans, to say the least, anyway. Yeah. However, you have to have good GPUs for Maya. You have well, to have 3D good GPUs. Well, 3D was, yeah, that's like Brianna's whole thing was like Maya is barely supported now, and there's a whole bunch of programs. I think it was Brush or one of those. They, they, just, they, don't, they don't come to the Mac, and if they do, it's a token port that they never that might change. bother to iterate on. That might change. I think if you have a machine might, that can suddenly render, you know, 10 times faster, um, and you know you just need to head support metal. I, I'm not sure that that's that's going to be the way it is always. They showed Unity uh, not running all that well, I thought. But yeah. you know we're watching a stream, so I don't know what it really looks like. Not Unreal, but Unity was interesting yeah. too. But I yeah. I do think that there's a good possibility Unreal might be ported to it. I don't know. Um, but again, I don't think they care about gamers all that much. But they definitely care about pro yeah. users. No, that, that's I, I think that's part of the problem. Users. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, when I buy a thousand dollar laptop or an eight hundred dollar desktop, I'm willing to accept some limitations in in in, uh, in exchange for hundred for a thousand dollars in my pocket. I, given how uh, well Apple builds these machines and how long into the future these machines are being supported by uh, by new operating systems, I mean, my five now six year old laptop will will run uh, Big Sur no problem. 
uh, I don't know what I'm going to be getting into uh, in three or four or five years from now. And so I don't want uh, the, lifestyle, the lifespan of my computer to be limited by Apple's deciding that, oh, well, Andy is mostly a writer guy. He does a lot of photography. He doesn't really play games. He, does, he spends some time in the command line, but not a lot. Plus, he, are, plus he, he has like a Linux box for Linux stuff. He doesn't need this. He doesn't need this capability, or he doesn't need this feature. The, the, remember that the. I, I always, I always uh, think back to one of the most brilliant uh, uh, trademarks that Apple ever took out for their uh, college program, which is describing the their, the Mac as wheels for the mind, and the slogan, "The power to be your best." That you're, you're, you maybe you didn't think that you're a graphic designer, but we will take all the mucky muck out of the process of laying out a newsletter or editing a photo or editing a video, so that you can discover that I'll be damned, I actually am a a, a, a film editor. I actually am a photographer, and I'm worried that once you once you start selling people a box that says, "And good news, we've put limitations over what you can do with it." Yeah. Don't worry, that little tiny brain of yours, you won't get confused <laughs> by anything. You know? no, so that's that's. that's yeah. I, I'm excited about the Mac again, but the only thing that's holding that's holding me back a little is again worrying that three or four years from now, a uh, 12K holography is going to be a thing. And I didn't, I didn't buy the right Mac for 12K holography. You know, well, the always, other Mac, Andy. That's always a problem. <laughs> I do have to say that uh, the iPad has developed a number of really good photography apps. I would say my photography yeah. workflow on the iPad now can be as good as on the desktop. And so it's not that people, it's the it's the legacy guys, the, the Lightrooms of the world that are not coming along. I should also say I was wrong in saying Apple doesn't care about gamers. Obviously they do, just not PC gamers. They care a lot <laughs> about casual, casual yeah. gamers and Apple Arcade and, and all of, and that story is really good. You suddenly get access on your Mac to uh, a million <laughs> iOS Monument games. Valley. Monument Valley, yeah. right? <laughs> so uh, that's very that's actually a very good story. And I would bet there are a lot more of those kinds of gamers than there are hardcore. And it's super gamers. interesting because if the VR rumors that we saw last week, Mark Gurman did this whole long report on Apple and VR are true and they change directions from having to have a, a big hub, which was more of a traditional computing solution to having something like the Oculus Quest, then a lot of the tools and software, not only to develop that, will probably be optimized for the for these Macs, but it could bring a whole different kind of gaming environment to Apple yeah. hardware in general. They were very clear to say you're gonna be better, ML's gonna be better. A lot of yeah. the stuff, the more modern technologies uh, Programmers want unified to use. memory, which I know some people don't prefer, but other people find really fast. Huge. I, I mean, there's a yeah. lot. Uh, it's a lot to unpack too, and I haven't even started watching the the seminars, you know, the sidetracks. Yeah. But mm -hmm. there's a lot to unpack. I do agree with you, Andy, that some of the edge cases could be very burdensome. Things like audio extensions, which may be challenging to port. I don't know. Yeah. Um, they did mention that specifically. That you know, you're you're all your extensions would still work but those are going to be those are going to be challenging i don't know yeah they're gonna be they're gonna be some good stories if apple chairs to shoes shares chooses, chooses to, to share, share them, them. <laughs> uh, about about all the little things that like didn't even make a keynote didn't even make a footnote There's but a were just it. such a bear yeah. to fix well, well like just even thunderbolt 3 which is oh that thing that we got for free with the intel chip we now have to do ourselves <laughs> okay or maybe well, not maybe we, you know this would be a good time to say eh, usb 4 is probably all we need yeah. So as long as there's still the same expectation that I can run three 4K scre screens and a, and, and a GPU uh, off of whatever they're running off of this ARM-based Mac, that no, it's the the whole the whole the, the key point to all of this is going to be we are doing nothing but giving you things. We are not taking things away right. from you by by, right. by switching to ARM. That's a good point. But that was a huge shot at Intel when they started bringing up the SOCs that Apple made, and you start seeing that it's not just a CPU and a GPU, right. and yeah. it's not even just a neural engine or a machine language accelerator. Very subtly in those corners, there was like Apple had to write their own timing controller because in, Intel just could not ship them a timing controller that would work on 5K displays. They had to build their own H.265 encode decode block because Intel just couldn't build it into the processor and they were tired of offloading it to the GPU. And all of these things that sort of patchworked into a T2 chip to cover up the stuff that they couldn't, that they wanted to do, but they couldn't do with Intel Silicon is just built into this next generation of Silicon by birthright. Uh, and even things like the performance control 
controller. One of the reasons why Apple gets such good battery life, such good performance uh, efficiency, is that they can switch between those cores, like and the neural engine, like on a uh, an instruction by instruction basis. And there's just mm. so many good things coming into this generation of silicon compared to Intel, which has really been standing still for several years. Yeah, I wanted. Yeah, I was. There were a number of slides that I really wanted to freeze frame. Yes. On this is this is uh, this is one of them where they're starting to let me see if I can f get to it. They're starting to talk about uh, that exact thing where all the all the corners. Uh, and how great is it to see Johnny Saruji finally at an event? Never seen waiting. him before. I know no. it, was, it was fabulous. I really was very excited <laughs> uh, by this. I thought this was. You think it's like he's a star now and he's demanding green M and M's and no, it's just impossible know. to get. No. Him. <laughs> he is a star. He doesn't have to. Shoot, I yeah. was on the slide and I had it. I just for, I couldn't freeze it fast enough. It's in. Can, can, can I say parenthetically that for the past month, <laughs> all of these engineers and all these managers have been saying, "Oh, by the way, uh, we're gonna we're gonna need two hours in your lab. We need to install dramatic, colorful up lighting." Do you think this was a, all right? Do you think this was a set or was this uh, the lab? You think? I think it was I'm a set. I'm guessing a set. I think yeah. it was a set. <laughs> uh, some of those chairs did, looked pretty, but the I didn't look like... The camera work and transitions were so good was throughout well the entire done. thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, was, I was actually... There was a little trepidation uh, because uh, I it obviously immediately, as soon as Tim Cook came on, never blinked, obviously uh, <laughs> a shot ahead of time and edited. And I was... Oh, here's that slide. I was a little, nor, a little nervous yeah, I because um, I thought, oh, this is going to be, you know, kind of dead. And it was a little, but man, they had such information and they did a very good job. And that was the thing that Apple wanted, obviously, was by editing it ahead of time to really make it rich yeah. with content. I mean, just this slide alone. I mean, I'm just looking yeah. at this going, wait a minute, what? Oh, 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 wait, what is it? What is it? Oh, yeah. It's like the A13 slide from the iPhone event where it's just yeah. chock full of blocks and you yeah. want to take each one yeah. of them apart. Yeah. Yeah. I would have loved to have done, uh, you know, 10 minutes on each of these things. Mm -hmm. uh, I really wouldn't mind if they went to this format for the uh, for all WWDCs. I I really like how precise this was put together. I really thought because because there's no audience to react. Uh, not that they're always going for shooting for those applause breaks, but I feel as though that really laser focused every. Well, this, if this is going for an hour and fifty three minutes, then we have to have a, an hour and fifty three minutes of content because we're not going to lose twenty three minutes to cheering and and applause. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. I didn't mind he, that one bit. Craig still did his crack marketing team and their drug-induced. That was <laughs> weird. What, would you please explain that? I, is that a thing with like Phil and Jaws where he just has to needle that point? Because there was no, there was no, there were no engineers or developers in the audience to laugh at that. That was purely for him, it felt like. It was very <laughs> weird. Uh, I was trying to figure out what was going on there. What, so what is the backstory on that? He started that when they changed the California names. He said, you know, our, and he's done it a couple of times, like, oh, it's impossible to believe these are the real families of our marketing teams when they looked at the, right, the right. photos. Oh, yeah. But he's like, he did the whole OS 10 weed thing when he said, like, they were taking a, a trip through the back. <laughs> right. I, I think it's just, it's his version of dad jokes. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I thought, I really hope they're not crack fueled, but okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, no, it was really good, and I think uh, here's the here's the uh, Tomb Raider uh, demo. Now looking at this instead of streaming uh, directly, it's not impressive. I mean, compare that to Unreal Five; it's not even uh, close. But is it's that good the enough. Game itself, though, I, I can't remember. Is this is it this an look, it's iOS not a cut game? Scene. Oh, I don't it's know. Tomb Raider, yeah, it's Tomb Raider Shadows, and it, the impressive thing is supposed to be that they the just lighting. downloaded. It's an yeah, Intel yeah, it app, just ran it, yeah. and it did just a, it did dynamic um, translation at right. install, and then so it's doing like, like real time. That's one of the things that's really cool is that when you download the app, it goes through the whole thing and translates ahead of yeah. time. So there, I imagine, will be some longer process of installing. And for JavaScript, it'll do dynamic just in time translation. Right. Go ahead. So Laura. if you think about the fact that this was an iPhone game that's running on a Mac, it's really that's impressive. Pretty, not, it, and you, by the way, were, were they expecting, you know, like it's an Intel you know, Mac game PlayStation running on a, quality. On a, it's the other way around. Yeah. It's an Intel right. game running on an iPad chip. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. In, in, when you know that, then, OK, that is pretty impressive. Although yeah, Metal's that is probably that, doing some of the lifting. Yeah. Yeah. 
But what, what, is, what does it say that after years, maybe even decades of Apple trying to figure out how to get de game developers excited about gaming on the Mac, they finally answer as well, what if we internally got excited about making their games work on our hardware? There we go. We finally have the sol sol solution. Yeah. That, 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 is a, that is a big deal that I hadn't even considered, that all the uh, tier one games that have been sort of missing out on the Mac experience and suddenly getting those maybe for free or without at least make them playable. Uh, I'm, I'm not a gamer, but I know a lot of people for whom that is at least one of the things that they consider when they consider what Mac to get, or excuse me, what machine to get. It's nice to have po Pokemon that. Pokemon Go on the Mac? Ooh, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. It does not run on iOS 14, Leo. It crashes on launch. Just warning. Oh, yeah. I tell you, that's I'm why very I'm very sad not today. Not, not moving my. Uh, here uh, is good, uh, here's Debbie and Ten running Gnome. A lot of the Gnome fans were thrilled that uh, Gnome got a little shout out. Is it Gnome or Genome? I, I never say know Gnome. But you can say whatever <laughs> you want. I don't care. Um, let's take a little break. There's lots more to talk about, including I think the biggest changes to iOS. Yeah. Uh, in history <laughs> since oh that too yeah we did that, oh, that. Too. <laughs> oh we'll throw that in if, if but if there's anything else you want to talk about with arm 2 we can we can i mean there's just this is one of those where it's just an embarrassment of riches it's so exciting yeah. and we are really i mean uh, you know hyperbole aside this is a new era we're about to enter a new era and i think there's a lot of stuff that's uncharted and i don't know i can't say for sure lori that we're going to lose our beautiful cherished max but it feels like we're, it's actually better than it was. It feels like yeah. it's part of a now, it's, it's a full partner in a, e a beautiful mm. ecosystem. That's a good way to describe it. I like that. Okay. Good. Yeah. Leo's a poet. <laughs> makes I'm, you feel I'm, better. I'm, I'm very, very pleased. I'm very, very pleased by what I saw yesterday. Um, as, I, as I've been saying for the past month or so, I'm, my, my desktop, my, my, both of my laptop and my desktop Macs are reaching end of productive life. And so I'm sort of budgeting for buying a new desktop and buying a new laptop this year or the next. And this really got me excited about, uh, at yeah. the very least, buying a new Mac uh, desktop. Would, and you under want no the circumstances, first, would, would you want the first sili Apple Silicon? <sighs> That's an interesting question. I it would depend on what it is. I mean, if they if they took the developer edition of this and said, oh, by the way, we've did, we've uh, we have uh, fixed all of the uh, this this was a fine computer for developer use, but we realized that for human beings we needed to fix a few things. But here is the here is our uh, our uh, our Apple Silicon based Mac Mini. I would consider it. Uh, if it, if it particularly for at the right price because um i would i'm really really keen to give this as thorough a workout as i possibly can as Scientist someone who has to Andy write about it. this sort of stuff <laughs> yeah well, well well and also also i can think about you know if it worse comes to worse okay i'll i'll tell myself i need a new one 2 years from now <laughs> in addition and that'll work <laughs> um but it's it, it really it really does shift everything i, I am convinced that apple's going to do a good job with the transition what they wind up with is a little bit of a question mark in my mind but the, uh, really i the thing i want every time there's like a wwdc keynote every time there's a google io keynote anything like that uh, a state of the union that sort of thing i want to get excited about what the future holds for a platform and this is the first time in years i have been actually excited about yeah. what could be in store for the mac it must be five or six years since i've thought that apple even cared this much I about agree. the mac frankly it felt like they One thing that drifted away it really did yeah the thing that excites me is that like Apple, when you look at what they've done on iOS, they want they decide they want a feature like Face ID and the Silicon team, software team and hardware team spends two to three years making it, integrate it and then ships it where previously with the Intel chips, it's like we want to do. Oh, we can't. OK, we'll make a T2 chip. Can we do? Yeah. Uh, OK. And now yeah. they'll be able to do the same thing yeah. with Max. It'll be like they can ship those features yeah. not only at the same time as iOS devices, but they can ship exclusive Mac features that they've specifically designed for the Mac. Yeah. It's they can create so you're gonna roadmaps blame now, of features. Apple. I'm sorry. <laughs> they can, sorry yeah, Andy. exactly. <laughs> if they do it wrong, it's their fault too. But they can create roadmaps to features uh, like infinitely. And then yeah. just they're the ones in charge of making sure it happens. And it's yeah. a virtuous They don't circle. have to wait. Uh, you know, instead mm -hmm. of having to do stuff because Intel screwed up, it's it's mm -hmm. all powers itself. It's, it's uh, the momentum that Apple's going to build here. It could yeah. be awesome. 
It could really be. I get awesome. that. This this is why I'm really keen to see. I'm I really like the idea of this first the first mass market one being a laptop, because this is one area in which there is just you can you can talk about how oh but look what are we doing with the system on a chip and look what we're doing with this structures like okay here is last year's Intel based version of that <laughs> eight hours of battery life here is the new Apple yeah. silicon sixteen hours of battery life we haven't life. even talked about that but yes yeah. that's one of the things ARM anyway really excels at and. Uh, boy, yeah. that would be nice, wouldn't it? Uh, even, th even even just a 20% increase in battery life would get yeah. a lot of people say, okay, I was I'm worried, in. but yeah. I'll... <laughs> yeah. Well, and uh, the only bad thing is if you're due for a new Mac, this probably isn't the time you want to go to the store. And mm -hmm. that's what worries me a little bit about Apple saying, well, there's still more Intel in the pipeline. I guess that is for well, the people who like, need again, it. depends, again, how change adverse you are. Because right. there are some people who are going to say, not a Rev A board ice, or no, you idiots can spend <laughs> three years bleeding edge testing you know, beta testing Apple's hardware. I'll wait, and then I'll get the last Intel. I'll ride that three or four years, and then it'll be nice and warmed up by the time I buy That's uh, fair. Apple Silicon. That's fair. I, but, but but I for one, would not, you know, I need a new iMac. Uh, Lisa's yep. iMac's pretty old. I'm not, there's no way I'm buying a new iMac until I see what Apple does next year. <laughs> I think yeah. I mentioned this before, though. I, I don't, I just don't think that Apple... It, I don't think they suffer from that. I think that as a brand, they market themselves well enough that... You know, a, a good portion of people who want a new Mac don't even know what Apple Silicon is versus Intel. They just want a new Mac, so they're going to just go buy it yeah, when it comes out. That's probably true. And then, yeah. and then there's going to be the people like us who are going to wait. But I don't think that's enough of a portion of the community that will have a negative effect on on sales of the Mac. I really don't think that's going to make yeah. a very big difference who in bought, the end. So if <laughs> I bought a, a, a G3 Cube. I mean, who bought, if you bought a, a Power PC at the end of the life there after Apple's Intel announcement, did that work out for? How did that work out? Yeah, they they held on to you Rosetta for a six, long, years. long time. Yeah, yeah. Remember, uh, does doesn't does anybody here have had, uh, was anybody surprised when Apple cut support for Rosetta finally? No. Uh, but our surprise was like, wow, really? Rosetta is still in. You're Mac still Mac using wow. that? Okay. Yeah, exactly. Well, the Quicken yeah. users were angry. Exactly. Right? Yeah, <laughs> the transition was very have... well managed, which is I think why they say Rosetta too. Uh, they re it was so well managed last time. I think they they hope yeah. that you'll see that and do it, and they'll do that it. That does actually make me wonder when they say years to come i i wonder what that means because right. my 2015 imac runs like it's brand new i'm i don't need a new yeah. one so like it's five years you know yeah, like but where or, do you see the how new long ones? will that go <laughs> but wait, i'm saying yeah it runs well for an intel mac wait well, but what i mean is for for people who it'll keep running you know i think they'll like, keep that going for for more than five years i'm for, guessing you're today, stuck you know? on big sur would be my guess you think so yeah I, I could I could run something faster than Big Sur on this. It's it's such I'm the, this is the Mac that I'm staring at right now. While well, that's to mostly because Intel has made no. This is part of the problem. <laughs> Intel has made no progress in five years. That's I part think of you'll the get problem. one more one more major version. You'll get like I don't know Golden Gate or whatever it is next yeah. year. Whatever, and next then they'll year. start to yeah. deprecate. Yeah. yeah. Uh, our show today brought to you by Roman Men, guys. We are terrible. <laughs> about our health, right? The last thing a guy wants to do is go see a doctor. Uh, we've been taught, that's because we've been taught since we were in Little League, rub some dirt on it, walk it out. You're going to be fine. Don't cry. But there are times, it's really important that you that you get some help. And there are some issues men can, can have that really you don't want to suffer. Erectile dysfunction is absolutely one of those. But there's a lot of other things guys go through fortunately there's a solution roman was started i love the roman origin story it was started by a young guy whose dad was a doctor a men's health doctor and the young guy was in his 20s suffering from ed and his dad knew that that can be a sign of other issues they found those issues thanks thankfully and he had, I think he had a couple of open heart surgeries because he had heart problems. Uh, so it's always an issue. And you don't, if you're going to look for a solution to your problem, you do want to go to a doctor. And that's what's great about Roman. None of the embarrassment, but all of the medicine with a digital health clinic for men. Uh, they've built this platform to connect you with a doctor licensed in your state without, you know, leaving your armchair 
without the embarrassment and anything that they that anybody can do to make it easier for men to get health care discreet professional care genuine prescription medicine they have the new generics which is great you'll save a lot of money uh, or and they have a lot of over-the-counter treatments for a lot of other issues in fact i've been taking their testosterone vitamin supplements which are great i feel great uh, roman helps you with sexual health hair and skin like dandruff eczema uh, prostate health bone health they make it convenient to get the treatment you need right from your home. You grab your phone, you grab your computer, you will get your first online visit absolutely free. You'll hear back from a U.S. licensed physician within 24 hours. And this is important. They're not just going to write the script. They are going to talk to you. They are going to, if the doctor, if the doctor decides treatment's right for you, medication can be shipped right to your door with free two-day shipping. But they will do a diagnostic because they understand that often there are underlying conditions. And that's what I really love about this. Free unlimited follow-ups as well. Any time with your doctor, whether you have just have questions or you want to adjust your treatment plan, and there's no commitments you can cancel any time. I am a huge fan of this because I know, guys, we, we, just, we just don't get the, the help we need. And now it's easy to do. Let Roman be your source of wellness. And if you're struggling with ED and you don't want to talk about it, I know it's it can, it's an embarrassing conversation. Stay home. Go to getroman.com slash MacBreaks. Suffer no more. You'll get a free online visit, free two-day shipping when you go to getroman.com slash MacBreak. I think this is a, a, a really important thing that everybody needs to know about. And you know what? If, if you have a guy in your life who is not doing it, Get it. Get Roman. Just write it on a post-it note. Put it on a screen. Get Roman.com slash Mac Break. We thank them for their support of Mac Break Weekly. I have to admit, this was this uh, just like you said, Andy. This was a very exciting time to be an Apple fan. And I, my biggest concern is Apple is gonna is gonna really the ecosystem is going to get stronger than ever. The lock-in's going to be stronger than ever. I'm looking at some of the home kit things they're doing, and I'm thinking, uh, we have to get rid of that. that Google stuff that I've got. I don't need that anymore. <laughs> but that's an alliance. There, so you that, That's an alliance because Apple doesn't own the it stuff. It's all being bought up by Amazon and Samsung and Google, and so they're making this alliance so we still have access to it. Let's hope so. <laughs> Let's hope so, yeah. Um, I, You know, I don't even know... Bring up anything you want to talk about. There's so Can many. Can I ask about widgets? Because you and Andy are Android <laughs> users. You know, every survey I've seen says that, you know, like geeks love widgets. They love them, but that's like 10% of users. Most people buy a phone. It, they Whatever widgets are on the screen, they just leave there. They never change them. And I'm wondering if that's going to be true in iOS. We didn't have them, so we wanted them. And now that we have them, nerds like us will play with them for a few weeks and then settle into our patterns. No, you're going to use them. And the vast majority of people won't ever you're gonna use them. turn them on. You're going to use them. In fact, the main okay. reason I carry an Android phone it's because of the widgets. But I also noted, and a lot of people are going to say a couple of things, and I've already heard it. Oh, Apple's just copying Android. And actually, I heard some people say, oh, Apple's just copying Windows Phone, <laughs> <laughs> which in some respects they are. But I think Apple did widgets. This is what Apple's good at. And I'm not an Apple fanboy, as you all know, but I think they did widgets in a much more thoughtful way. Part of the problem with Android is anything goes, and you can make your screen look like, like you know, Times Square if you want. Mm -hmm. I think Apple, I think, the, for instance, the, you tell me, Andy, but the widget stack, that's something that's not on Android. The idea you can have widgets that reflect the time of day and give you the information you oh, would want. Oh, smart widget stack. Yeah. Smart widgets. But that's even a, just a widget stack so I don't have to take up my whole screen. I have on Android, I don't have a lot of room for icons and some of my screens. You know the screens. person who invented sure, Dashboard is going, come on, widgets. I had this a decade yeah. ago. Yeah, but the <laughs> idea that I could have one widget and scroll through it even is good. Go ahead, Andy. Yeah, it's, well, uh, uh, that, that might be a good point about 10%, uh, only 10% of the uh, people using uh, widgets. But uh, how many iPhones did Apple sell last year? <laughs> <laughs> and what's ten percent of Mr. Some, Anaco, oh, There you go. I've got, I've got the, yeah, I've got the. There's two point one billion iPhones since production began. Uh, but it's uh, even, well, even on the Andro even in the Android world, I don't always see people who have widgets on their screen. But it's a good thing to have if that works for you. Like I, I try to ride my bike almost every day, uh, and there are several days when I'm riding my bike to, excuse me, in the before times, I have to ride, uh, I have to get into <laughs> Boston, so I ride my bike to the commuter rail station. It is really important for me to know like 
if, is it going to rain today and when is that going to happen? Uh, and so that's why I've got like this one by three uh, horizontal widget on page one of my launcher that will just always tell me here's what the here's what the weather is doing right now. Here's what's going to do for the rest of the day. And the same thing for uh, for my fitness tracker where I you know it's this is the first when I wake up my phone or when I go to a launcher this is the first thing I see and this is a good place for me to remind myself that yes you definitely do need to get on your bike today because you have not been uh, making your goals uh, and then if uh, then if the you you have to keep in mind that this is like a, a an app launcher is a multi-page thing. When I'm on when I'm traveling, when I'm uh, at a conference like in New York or, or another city, that means that when I flick left from my screen, I'll, I'll create an entire like launcher screen that is just a widget with here is here are my here is my my schedule for the rest of the day. Here is like a, a note that I've pinned to remind myself from the, of, of who I'm meeting with, and here are like uh, little widget uh, launchers or widget shortcuts to people I might need to text with. It just it. it it's not the sort of thing that uh, a phone user needs to have, but once you realize that it's there, and if this widget system is done very, very well, it's the sort of customization that stops making this like every other phone and every other Apple ad and makes it personally your phone, the one that responds to your needs. Uh, and I also want to point out it becomes a bigger thing too. Uh, yeah. People, Apple people. <laughs> have a bad taste in their mouth from the word widgets. <laughs> We're <know>. not talking <laughs> dashboard widgets here. Uh, oh, the poor guy from Dashboard Video. He was a fall <laughs> grab. The did moments. they get? Did they get rid of? Finally, get rid of Dashboard Big Sur. I think so. <laughs> those widgets. Well, no one widgets used now. them, but those widgets lived forever. I mean, they were still around. In you know, I think in Catalina, I can't remember. They were hidden. You had to re-enable. You had to enable them yeah. sneakily if you wanted. Yeah, them. but that's not what we're talking about. These are uh, incredibly useless. These and are like. I think the the Apple Watch stuff really helped them, right? Like the the amount of rich visual, yes. uh, dense information that was still highly glanceable to me is like transformative. I look at these and I look at dashboard widgets, even the old today view widgets, and it's like those are the Stone Ages of widgets yeah. already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you What do you think, Lori? Have you ever used widgets on a phone no other than the the lock screen widgets that that are already on the phone right. now or on, on an generation. ipad those those uh, today mm -hmm. view right. widgets but now, that's actually, not what we're uh, talking about exactly here for ios 13 though having that that side panel with widgets actually was more useful to me than the way iOS 13 currently works, where you have to swipe over to another screen to see your widgets. So even that small jump in iOS 13, where on the iPad you had a site, you have a side panel of widgets, even that makes a big difference for me. And then now that I'm I'm playing around with widgets on the home screen, it just seeing, for example, the weather right there on a bigger widget. Yeah. You know, it's just there. I don't have to swipe or anything. It's right there on my home screen. And I, that does make a big difference. And un, and also, like Windows Phone, there are live tiles. There are different sizes and shapes. Mm -hmm. I think I predict widgets will be more popular on iOS than they are on Android. I think uh, iOS users, because it's going to be an aesthetic experience. They're going to mainstream the technology. Yeah. And I yeah. also feel like I personally have suffered... Every time I look at my iPhone, it's like a grid of icons. Really? <laughs> yep. Really? That's the best you can do with all that real estate? So I'm personally going to dive in. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty excited, too, by all the people who are intimidated by writing full featured apps. But if they're le learning Swift to say, well, how hard is it to do this little widget that will just tell me the time of my next train? Oh, yeah. Uh, and, yeah that, like, and that will get this Can you write a standalone widget? You don't, widget? You don't have to have an app to go with it? I think well, so. they I'm haven't had developer. that as an option yet. <laughs> yeah, we don't know yet. Yeah. Yeah. Like a but menu that, but, bar yep. app, though. That I, Andy, I, what you're talking about makes sense. One of my favorite things to have on my on my Mac is things in the menu bar. I've got a, like a <laughs> dozen of them that just go across my yeah, menu bar because yeah, yeah. It, that, that quick right. access, I There's love it. There's a good example. Yeah, yeah. And a widget that all it does is like gives you, you know, a tiny bit of information about your yeah. battery life or, you know, what's coming up for today on, on your schedule. But it's not a full fledged app. It's just maybe a, um, a new way to display information on a different app you have. I love this idea. I'm very curious now. I've, I would I would write, for instance, I could see for us, it would be great to have a Mac Break Weekly widget that all it did was was sit there and tell you there's a new show you want to listen and play it right? yeah that or would be great it, or what if it gave you the option to open the live stream 
there right you there go. on your homepage. Yeah. You yeah. could have one or the other. So it's a little bit in between. It's like a shortcut, but it's more than a shortcut because it has informational displays. It's it's live. I really think this is going to be uh, a big deal. Now, yeah. maybe not. I don't think not. they allow video in them yet. I think that I think no, they're still greatly limited. No, but you do have picture in, in picture on the iPhone, yeah. which cracks True. me up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but still, ima imagine like to, just to keep selling this point. Imagine a widget that all it does is when you press a button, it will call for a lift. And if once right. you, mm -hmm. once you said yes, but acknowledge this. Now that the widget changes to here is how much time here is the distance and time uh, that your car is away. Uh, that's the sort of thing we'll get uh, we'll get onto a lot of home screens. Also, is this a? Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> also, Andrew, you know, they have this thing called Clips, which I, uh, you know, Google yeah. announced two years ago. And I don't think it, I don't know if it never happened. App fragments, right? Or yeah. never, it was never written, but you never saw it snippets, happen on Android snippets. I think this could be fantastic for exactly that, a Lyft, where I, yeah. uh, how many times do you get to a town and you don't have the cab application that that city uses or the parking, or the parking meter application? Yeah. Yeah. And just to be or able rent to a bike. point it out there. Now, I don't know if the NFC or the specially designed Apple QR codes, you <laughs> never know when Apple announces this stuff if they're going to take off like wildfire or more likely mm -hmm. nobody ad adopts it and it doesn't happen. But I hope we more apps use both widgets and clips. I think yeah. they're a really good feature. Yeah. When people say that, oh, well, Apple ha finally has this feature from Android, number one, yay, <laughs> just like right. every Android user that. was celebrating yeah. when they got a great feature from Apple. But also, um, Google, for all of its power, doesn't have that power to really strong arm developers into supporting even the greatest technologies that they've made available for developers. Uh, snippets are, have been a thing uh, for, for quite a while. You typically only see it happen when someone messages you like a link to a rideshare, where now it'll just, if you don't have a rideshare app, it'll grab whatever it needs to give you the information you need or to like verify something. Uh, Apple, for good and for bad, really has the ability to really lead its developers and say, this is so important important that we're going to put we're, we put together this amazing video and we promise we're not talking about uh, aluminum or chamfered engines here we're going to really walk you through why this is an important technology and get its developers motivated to figure out why well, my, my, my god this is exactly what my app has been needing for years even though i only found out it existed uh, last week so uh, it's 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 a really much it's a much more important thing when apple announces a new feature for ios than when uh, google announces a new feature for android because you will get so much faster buy-in from Apple developers than you will from Android developers. Hey, Lori, what are you most excited about? Oh, God, there's so much. I know, it's I mean, hard you, to pick. I you, know. you cannot ask what I'm most excited well, tell about us because a couple there's of too things. much. Um, I, I definitely loved the widgets and the app clips. I think those were really a, um, a really big... Um, think I'm my brain right now is processing. All right. Okay, like what? I'll what narrow it down. Millions of things. <laughs> there were a number of new things on Apple Watch. Anything you saw there you liked? Yeah. So with Apple Watch, I think um, the it, a lot of people are kind of like poo pooing it, or maybe don't think it's that big of a deal. But I like the um, the what the screen the uh, face watch face sharing. Um, yeah. thing, that, tell me how that's going to work. I didn't really understand that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, on my Apple watch, I have all my cute little custom watch faces, you know, right. I've got the pride one that's analog and I've got the pride one that's digital. And on the pride one that's analog, I've got the weather app, but I've also got, <laughs> you know, the timer, for example. And if one of my friends were thought, Oh, that's cute. Which, what, what customizations do you use on that? What complications do you use on that? All I have to do is press and hold and then send it to them and Ooh, then they can just get it. I they like don't have that. to, I don't have to describe to them what I did. <laughs> and so if, uh, if, if there's, um, a so this, Strava or, or, you know, somebody like that, if they want you to use their app, they might on their marketing have a right, an Apple a watch link. face that includes that. And all you have to do is send this to Apple watch right. and it will show up on your Apple watch. And if you don't have the app, It'll take you to the app store so that you could just download it directly. This, I think this is a great little thing. Does this scratch the itch for uh, third-party faces? Like this is halfway. It doesn't, there. but it to me, it it's an it's leading down a path that could be that. Like it's possible that Apple's testing this out, this sharing thing, and they're seeing how. Uh, companies would maybe possibly use this for their own marketing purposes. And if they find that to be somewhat successful, they might open this up to allow at least companies to create 
third party to watch basis. Tickle to distract you from the itch. They're tickling one side <laughs> to distract you from the itch on the other. Well, but yeah. now that they have big complications, you could, I mean, as you mentioned, Strava could have a special complication. You go to their website, mm -hmm. click the link, and, and now that you have that on your watch, um, that's close. It's not cu customizing right. the whole face. But and they it's can have multiple um, complications per app now, too. So you could really take over a oh watch face, yes. like the Nike that's face. The other it's not just one Nike. Yeah. That's another thing that I, I'm really interested in is not just the weather complication from Carrot, but maybe the weather complication that either shows me today's weather or it shows me tomorrow's weather. There's something where I could have different customizations for the complication on Apple Watch. I think those are both really cool things. How about sleep? Uh, you you, you come to the some. wrong person. I sleep really well. <laughs> oh, so, so jealous. That's oh. something I was going to say I've who has time to sleep. Lori I'm on, yeah. I'm on the <laughs> other side of the scale where I sleep so badly, I don't want to know how badly I slept. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and Lisa's bad because she will every morning say, eh, what'd you get on your sleep score? I got an 86. It's like, oh, shut uh. up. I don't want to know. But I was at is, 50 when Georgia made me install the yeah. app, and I worked my way up to like 75, 80 oh, nice. sometimes. Yeah, Georgia's a So it actually proponent. helped you then yeah. to like come up yeah. with some things that you could try to do, which, what by the way, wind down, I I am interested yeah. in. I like this. This um, Sometimes I do have a bad habit of staring at my phone or my iPad right before going to bed, that, and that just kind of keeps my brain moving too much, and I'll have a little trouble getting to sleep. This is a great idea to prep you for time to go to because I use the bedtime feature on the um, on the clock app that that I think is just perfect. But at you know ten thirty or eleven or whatever I've got it set for, it just goes time for bed. <laughs> That's all I have. <laughs> so wind down is a way to kind of prep you ahead of time of like it's you know it's ten o'clock or ten thirty. So we're going to dim the screen or we're going to dim the lights in your house and we're going to turn on some comfortable music, whatever sort of shortcuts you want to plan for that. And that could help you just prepare for the falling asleep part. I wonder if Apple has invented some sort of over the air charging because you're not going to want to ever take your watch off now. Well, I'm just saying, it, 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 uh, it, 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 if it I wear my watch hour, all day like, well, and then I wear it all night, how fast does it, it charge? Goes into, it goes into low power mode. Like oh, So okay. it, as soon as it goes yeah. into sleep mode, it goes into an ultra, ultra low power mode. So an average eight hours, it's not going to pull too much off. And then immediately when it comes out, it shows you, like it visibly shows you battery level. So the idea is either when you take your shower before going to bed, you'll put it on the charger. When you wake up in the morning and you take your shower, you shave or you brush your teeth or whatever, yeah. you'll put it on the charger. And those, those those two small areas will, given how, how well it charges now, will more than make up for what you're losing yeah. overnight. And then, then then Apple fitness tracking will will start to give you points for showering, and then people won't be able to take it off in the shower. The washing but your no, hands I, I, is crazy. I, I, it listens to the bubbles. Like, it listens it to the bubbles. Here's the squish, squish. For smushing the soap. I actually, I mean, I it's a limited try that. It's a limited time offer, but I think it'll be handy because I'm always singing yep. happy birthday twice and stuff. It'll be nice that's to, to know. Bubble science right there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it knows because yeah, of the weird contortions your hands make and the yeah. sounds the soap makes. It says, that's oh, you're washing your hands keep going keep going i wonder if they modeled that or the dancing workouts first if it was a good overlap in ai <laughs> challenges like can we can we determine hand washing versus salsa <laughs> mm. well, more, more than anything else, I'm glad to see that Apple's continuing to like color in more parts of the of the yes. fitness map. I with agree. this, every with every new release, they come up with another area in which they can provide some benefit. And that and uh, sleep tracking for the past year or so has become a really big issue for me. Not that I don't I don't have sleep apnea, I don't have anything like that. It's just that oftentimes I lose track of how much sleep I got the night before versus how much I'm getting now. And if all it did was tell tell me that okay, you were asleep. For last night, last night you slept for four and a half hours. Uh, today you slept for nine hours, to, uh, and then Monday your low score was like two and a half before you decided that it was time to get out of bed and start working on something. Uh, and this is the, this is the sort of thing that gets me more and more excited about having an Apple Watch and damn the torpedoes. I'm I'm hoping that moving uh, moving Max to ARM means that we'll get one step closer to Apple uh, removing that limitation of Apple Watches having to be locked into uh, and paired to an iPhone.
iPhone, which I, mm. I increasingly, but particularly with all the announcements with watchOS this year, is seems like a completely artificial limitation that Apple should have a way of allowing people to, as particularly people who have other Apple devices like an iPad, uh, to have an Apple Watch, to have it paired to that, to use that for App Store installs, uh, and not have to be switch an entire phone platform, just get all of the health benefits, which are getting even more and more pile on pile, tile, piles upon piles, uh, that I it, it, it becomes hard for me to decide not to buy a new Apple Watch Series 5 <laughs> with each passing month as these new features keep coming in, even if it means that I have to take my, the, la the latest iPhone that I own is an iPhone 6. And if I have to keep that <laughs> charged just, and, and just keep it on a stand, and all it does is, you know, d uh, 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 turns off the kill switch and saying, okay, we're going to let Apple, we're going to let Andy continue to wear his Apple Watch. He does own an Apple iPhone. <laughs> Turn off the deactivation sequence. Uh, that's what I will do because it well, is. You got to get the iPhone. Product. You got to get the iPhone SE, the iPhone SE two to go along with it. Yeah. Then, then you're then you're in a good. That's an place. iPhone accessory. That's an iPhone watch accessory. Yeah, they, they should they should <laughs> sell bundles. That's brilliant. They they should they should uh, sell bundles that way, where it's like it's not you don't even see the phone in the package. You just okay. Here's the charger and here's the little warranty card. And here's, here's the cord. Oh, what's this? Oh, it's it's an iPhone. Okay. <laughs> I need the, apparently I need this to get to get the watch working. I suspect yes. there's a certain amount of Apple of. Well, why would you ever not want an iPhone? I don't really understand. No, the other thing is that yeah. they they have like very specific features that are still dependent on an always on internet device being ubiquitously available. And the iPad, you can buy a Wi Fi only iPad, and there's no Max with LTE yet. And you know, we just we just that five percent of non polish irks us, and it just they get very inflexible yeah. sometimes with these things. Well, just make also, every I, uh, is, uh, Apple Watch have LTE. And then you yeah. don't have to worry about it. But this is yeah, well, this it's not real LTE yet. Oh, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I I keep saying this, and this becomes less and less of a joke with every new iteration. But Apple it keeps saying, "Oh, look at the lives we're saving, and the lives we're improving." Like, okay, but you're apparently saying that that's only the only people worth saving are people <laughs> who own iPhones. Yes. And so don't your point so get, being. Get off, get off. <laughs> Get off your five percent! Oh, but we're, we still we boy, there's still raging debates over the inner arc arc uh, uh, degree angle that we're putting on this. We don't care. We just want an Apple Watch Series Five that works for everybody who doesn't have an iPhone. Uh, I think the sleep app is also hopefully um, kind of points down the pathway that Apple might be taking by having the blood oxygen monitor in the next iteration of the Apple Watch. Because if we're already sleeping with our iPhone or with our Apple Watches on, then it can it can check that, uh, that blood uh, oxygen level while we're sleeping uh, instead of waiting until we've woken up, which also contributes. This came to my mind because uh, Andy had mentioned something about not having sleep apnea, but there are people who don't know when they have sleep ap apnea. Yeah. And this could be, yeah. that could be a feature that comes with the next Apple Watch is using all of that data that comes with um, the sleep uh, features right now in iOS and watch OS 7 plus a new Apple watch with a blood oxygen monitor, we could be looking at help for finding out whether or not you have sleep apnea or some other issues relating to your ability to breathe while you're sleeping. That's such, a, that's such a great idea, particularly if it can look at both heart rate and O2 levels to say, OK, this person might be having an apnea event. Let's wake him up right yeah, now yeah. by mm. bu buzzing the hell off of his or her wrist. But also, oh, I see that you've got an Apple speaker. I'm also going to put some pleasantly but alarmingly <laughs> wakingly up mo uh, music to say, thought you might like to know uh, your heart rate breathing. went up to 230 there. And yeah, it's yeah. So sorry if you didn't want to live, but we thought it would new, be proof. New uh, feature. But first of all, they're renaming activity to fitness and uh, my favorite part of the whole keynote was they're showing off the dance uh, uh, <laughs> workout uh, with in fact staying the presenter alive. staying alive dancing uh, which is uh, great although uh, yep. the Batusi, right? Kevin Lynch is not a very good dancer but that was all right uh, they <laughs> have even now teleport this time we showed off teleportation in 2018 where is that app it where is that yet. where yeah. is that where where's where's the roller derby activity Ren has been working there for so long now I can't believe oh, she was <laughs> busy Andy did you see her on YouTube oh apparently oh, she, was, no. I know she was I know she was I busy you. what was she doing on YouTube what was the she feed? she hosted the dub dub recap on on Apple's YouTube site yesterday it's oh, amazing nice. oh that's great that's it's wonderful. There's a serenity yeah. emoji. It's like, I, I cannot <laughs> tell you how much my heart sang when I saw that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she didn't disappear into the firmament. She's 
actually working. Uh, actually, we didn't, we didn't even talk about Momochi. Like I saw Rene, the first the first I saw of oh, it yeah. was Renee instantly uh, updated every single <laughs> every single Momochi it posted on Instagram. <laughs> Did you really yeah, have masks now? Well, they have they yes. have one now that has my COVID hair. So it, instead of the normal hair, it just grows up and it had a mask. So I could <laughs> I could give a more accurate representation of what I look like outside. I'm now. just glad they now have old people. I was tired of Older, looking like, yeah. a, like a gray <laughs> haired ages. hipster. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they have like a, a face can, mask. Now you can also say, okay, look, you, you see this? I still have a little patch of my original sideburn color here. I want my emoji to reflect that. Well, let's not go crazy. <laughs> the one they, thing I also liked is that they, they, they never forget accessibility features. And some of them were really cool. Like they're using all of the computer vision technology that they've been building in to stuff like identifying photos and faces so that if a developer has a bug or is just negligent and doesn't identify a label in an interface, they'll try to guess what it is. Or if photos don't have good descriptions, they'll try to tell yeah. you it's two people sitting at a table. Or if it hears something and it's not, it'll try to identify what the sound is for you. And they even made it so that if you have an iPhone with um, face ID on it, you can tap the front to wake it like normal but you can double tap and triple tap the back to launch arbitrary actions, like bring up control center, I really the phone, can't wait launch to start use that, using that. There's some really, yeah. yeah. So you can, you tap the back twice or three yeah. times. Are both of them yeah. programmable or? Yes. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's another example of why not only are our accessibility features just generally important for accessibility, but they oftentimes will kind of provide a new means for everyone to share in the joy of using accessibility features. So uh, they, they're also, Renee, you were talking about, they, they're they uh, making some adjustments to the um, uh, sound stuff. So when, the, yeah. when you have headphones, it will um, let you know how loud of a decibel you're listening to them, listening to your headphones so that if it's too loud, um, you know, you'll get that. suggestions yeah. of turn of to turn it down, and then yep. you can actually access that information in your health app to see have you been listening to um, vol a volume too loud for too long on a regular basis, and maybe it's time to you know adjust you can, your your volumes uh, you can settings tune and things it right like too. that. Like you probably understand that better than me, but you can tune yes. it if you have different kinds of hearing. You can tune different frequencies. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So with um That's with AirPods and AirPods aid. Pro, yeah, yeah, with AirPods and AirPods Pro, you'll be able to like tune to your your own particular hearing needs, whether it's that you are having some hearing loss or if you have you know uh, uh, tinnitus or something like that. It'll allow you to make those adjustments, and and it works with transparency mode as well. So you can actually be um, you know for a, a person who. Um, wants to have the um, air AirPods in their ear when they're walking down the street, they can tune so that they can continue to listen to music and not have to filter out the sounds of, of things going by that might be dangerous. It, they could actually increase the sounds of cars driving by in order to make sure that they are staying safe when they have uh, transparency mode on in their headphones. So some really great stuff. Yeah. Also, if this you have a neural the, engine the in your device, you can do face. Uh, sorry, you can do face FaceTime right. group calling, and if it detects mm -hmm. you're doing sign language, it'll emphasize your. It'll make you bigger so people can better see your your sign language. It detects that someone is using <laughs> sign language. How cool is yeah. that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. I'll that sounds so cool. Yeah, this this is going to be. I was, all I was going to say was that it's going to be super exciting uh, this year and particularly next, when because uh, just late last year the FDA started to move on an old uh, mandate they had to start allowing over-the-counter hearing aids to be not necessarily certified but so sold but instead of being a strictly a, an audiologist prescribed device for certain types of hearing. You can simply you can se you can sell an over-the-counter device that says that if you have problems with this kind of hearing, this might help you. And that's why we've been seeing so many of these wonderful new sort of devices just in the past year or so. And the idea that you could have spent the, uh, this is the exactly the sort of upgrade that I like where maybe you were just like had a sharp intake of breath when you click that buy it now button for your $200 pair of, Air, of, of AirPods. But the, when it keeps getting more and more features and keeps getting better and better, and it, especially if it can help you realize that, oh, the, I, 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 the problem was that wasn't that the volume on this was too low. The problem was that I have a really hard problem, hard, hard, uh, hard issue, uh, getting high frequency, mid to high frequencies in a noisy environment. And now I actually can. So this is, again, part of that holistic approach towards health that I don't think any company is doing like Apple is doing. So you can get a watch OS 7 on your existing 
Series 3, 4, or 5, which yes. is very good news. Um, and you'll be able to do the public beta if you dare next yeah. month. <laughs> I might. What are you, chicken? I want. I, yeah. Okay. There are some differences. Like if you share a watch face from an, uh, an Apple Watch Five to an Apple Watch Three, which doesn't have the same faces or complications, it'll have to do some translating. It'll be slightly different, but like, as far as I know, most of the features come through fine. Uh, I don't do group messaging, but uh, Micah Sargent, who does apparently do a lot of group messaging, was very excited about the new messaging uh, features. Mm -hmm. Um, I I can't comment on them. I don't have. You don't have a kids I, blast. I'm excited Leo, about it. Where you just yell at all the no, kids at once. I should though. That would be good. <laughs> I have Leo a, blast. I have a couple kids. Go to bed. <laughs> the lawn. I have a couple group Leo messages. <laughs> Go ahead, Lori. Sorry. <laughs> I have a couple group. Of these these people. <laughs> Quiet, you. <laughs> <laughs> they are not in your group messages. I'm guessing. <laughs> they are not. Well, Renee's in one of them. So I have a couple group messages going, and and this there are so many things about the the messaging feature that I identify with so perfectly that I need this. The mentions, for example, and inline responses to things. Somebody will have said something, you know, when you just start moving in your group and you're just doing a lot of talking, somebody said something a minute ago and you're ready to respond, but now five people have already said right. something else and they've mm -hmm. moved on. So when you say something, it doesn't necessarily relate to what everyone else is saying. It doesn't make any sense. And maybe even taken out of context, depending on what you say after what <laughs> someone else says. So the inline um, commenting is really, really important. The one problem that I, ha I have with this, and I am almost positive this will not be the case, is I don't think that this will work with phones that use Android. So if you're in a group message yes. with even a single person that has an Android device, yes. none of these features will be available. And unfortunately, a couple of my group messages also have Android users and, in it. And I try is, to berate them and tell them that no. they need to get an iPhone or I won't be like their friends friend. anymore, but that doesn't work. Honestly, this is my problem uh, because I do have the one group message I have is with my family. But my daughter is a, a devout Android user. And so I feel like I'm not going to get to see the benefit of this. Yeah. We end up using or, Hangouts. Does, does anybody ever tell you to like put up or shut up saying, well, how, how much does this annoy you? And how much do you value my friendship? <laughs> Say enough to buy me a $399 <laughs> iPhone SE. Abby will not. Don't think I haven't thought about it. She will not use an and iPhone. Way, she more says, than I hate Apple. Answer, that's an answer. Yeah, she's not, <laughs> she is not an iPhone. She's Lori Gill in group messages right now. Yeah. <laughs> so so they're Taking also the uh, you can uh, you'll have the new look for the group messages with you can have an icon for it. I I really like mm -hmm. this um, this and those pop sync up too. Like that you can have up to nine of those pinned uh, group chats and they'll sync and they'll animate up the numbers and the memo wow. the, the tap backs and the the talking bubbles. It's really slick. Makes me want and, to get some friends. The, the, when the <laughs> little. Talking bubble. Okay, so <laughs> in a in a group message or even in a single message, there's that little bubble at the top that shows like the avatar of the person you're talking to. And in a group, um, I can't, what does it normally look like? I think it doesn't. You don't even have that in a group message. Checking on a different. No. Oh, they're line. They're stacked up along. They're right. along. Right. In a in a way this way. So now. The most recent person or people to have talked, their bubble gets bigger. Ah. So even when you're just not sure what's going on or who's talking, you know who the most recent person was that right. said something. And what they it's said. Really great. Which is cool. And what it's they like static said. Chat, yeah. chat heads. Yeah. Is there going to be a battle for bubble supremacy? For people, for people? Yes. <laughs> oh, and pinning conversations. Lori's going to win. Oh, pinning conversations. How many times, Renee, have I been looking around in our I'm More group chat? Yeah. I've been I'm looking for it because maybe it's been a few days since we've talked, and I need to f find something that you said or something like that. I can pin that conversation so that yep. it's always there at the top of the screen. Otherwise, you have to start <laughs> typing everyone's name again like an animal. It was just not fun. Yeah. <laughs> It's too much. Uh, translation now. Uh, this is just parody with Google and uh, Bing, but still nice to have. Safari will mm -hmm. also be able to do the translation. The one thing that's really cool about what Apple's doing with translation is it's on device, right? Yeah. So that's, I have to say, Apple was very clear that their one of their main advantages is privacy, and they mentioned it a number of times. Um, this is uh, people are more aware of privacy than ever before. Yeah, I, I especially like how uh, it. I really think in the new Safari, the difference between how they prosecute privacy versus how almost every other platform prosecutes privacy. Uh, other uh, other browsers, other systems, they 
use it as though, by the way, here's a dashboard to the side so you can be aware of what's happening. And we're also going to try to block things that might be a counter to your interests. The uh, 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 Apple, uh, the, the new version of Safari, it's like it's all out of always as a state of DEFCON 2, where it's expe yeah. it's 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 its whole attitude and how it communicates you is that you are constantly under attack by people who are trying to steal your data. Be aware that we've just we've just neutralized this inbound bogey. We have this <laughs> one that is a, could be a flock of geese. It could be a cookie you actually need to to do this transaction. It could be really bad. What do you want us to do with it? Just uh, I haven't obviously haven't had a chance to to install that yet because I don't have it on the desktop. But uh, it, I love how absolutely proactive it is, and th I'm sure that their their first big <laughs> they, they have two they had three things to say about Safari, and all of them are good. But uh, 50 cent faster. That's good. Uh, most one of the most energy efficient browsers you can run. Also very very good. But the, the again the aggression with which they are protecting you and protecting your privacy, it just goes to show that there is. I, I honestly think that health is the thing that they're most proud of across their product line. But privacy and security is number yeah. two. Well, okay, maybe accessibility number two, but privacy number three. Mm -hmm. Do you guys feel like the only the, thing that's go ahead, Renee, I'll let you finish. No, I was going to say like the, the biggest problem Apple and Firefox have right now is that Google has such um, a power over the web that people are writing for Chrome the way that they used to write for Internet Explorer. Yeah. And while we like to think that there are web standards, they're more like web suggestions and everyone kind of implements <laughs> them a little bit differently uh, and in different time scales. Like if you have to implement 10 things, someone does one of them first and the other one last and there's different priorities. And so what I like that Apple was willing to take plugins that weren't the native Apple plugins anymore, but were or the yeah. extension. Sorry. It was like a, it was like, yes, we're capitulating. We realize that we no longer have the ability to dictate extension architectures, but to Andy's point, we're going <laughs> to let you choose to run this once, to run this just with this website, right. or to always run this so that they can't sort of go roughshod through your browser either. Along with a emoji of your mother saying, we're not angry with you, son. We're just a little disappointed <laughs> and surprised, that's all. <laughs> were you, I was a little disappointed at the uh, iPad, uh, iPad OS. It felt like it kind of, of all of the new devices got the shortest shrift I widgets. have this theory that the cursor thing was going to be the big oh, the big thing but yeah. that was ready early and so oh. they shipped it with because that would have blown the door just that right. being right. part of this yeah. would have blown the doors off but the ipad was ready and the keyboard was ready they're like ah put it into four put it into 13.4 yeah. so for instance uh widgets on the phone but uh no widgets on ios you know they they might change that you know this is still like Beta, right. developer beta one, they they might just end up allowing you to, to move widgets off of that little sidebar and into it's the It's a little weird the that they screen. don't. I have a lot of screen The discussion is interesting because their thing is that the screen is so big, we'll just put them in the sidebar. And other people are like, the screen is so big, let's put them Anywhere everywhere. we want. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Renee, Renee is right as usual. There, especially when you look at Dev One of uh, of the release, there are a lot of things that they could go either way. There are just still debates in house over which way is the way to go, and it's going to come up. To, and a lot of it is going to be what feedback do we get from users on which one they like better. So, I suppose yeah, could it could change, but on the other hand, on the website where they're talking about features in iOS. Uh, they, that's mm. not there. So I, you know, and, I don't and know. they got the um, they got the new style widget, and also I don't think they got the app library either. I haven't double checked. Yeah, that, but they I don't. don't they they the don't have. Library. It yeah. doesn't have the app library yet. And, that's and a nice. to me, app library is a really good feature, yeah. and it there's no reason real estate be damned. There's no reason you shouldn't be able to have an app <laughs> library. It's digital Maria Kondo. So tell yep. Lori, what is the what does the app library do? This is for oh, iPhone. It's, it's kind of wonderful. I, so I, I am all, I am, I organize my apps like nobody's business. I, anytime I download it, it goes directly into a folder. Me too. So my home screen yes. usually only has two, maybe three swipes to it. I'm really good about that Me kind of too. thing. But I know a lot of people who just download an app and download an app and download an app and they have page after page after Micah page Sergeant. and they're constantly I'm saying, right Micah here. Sergeant. I don't know I'm where it's right at. Here. <laughs> so, <laughs> Micah cracks so, me up. Micah puts, makes 
26 folders, A through Z, <laughs> but just puts anything randomly in there. They're not alph alphabetized. He just said, well, I had to name it something. And every, so uh -huh. it's just like that. He's just, just jammed. And I have mm -hmm. zero folders. I just have an app you just, graveyard. You just have 100 pages Download of Download and I leave it. And then I use Spotlight yeah. if I have to find something. Yeah, that's what Michael yeah, does. Yeah, so Spotlight is fantastic. That's true. It, it, it's absolutely fantastic. But to scratch that organization itch, what what the app library does it so your first screen your home screen it has your app grid with your widgets and your second screen same thing but you swipe one more time and instead of there being a third screen with a bunch of apps on a grid it, you get the app library where all of your apps have been organized so you've got um the the recently used i believe is the very first one i'm going to go check it out right now so um, your recently used can, or your suggestions is in the first one. So that means apps that you use regularly. So for me, it would be like Scott, uh, uh, Slack or the notes. It's the same as the like Siri that. suggestions or is it a little bit different? It's different. The it's same. It's very trigger, different. Okay. Mechanics. Yeah. Same, the, and, the same uh, process, but it's going to surface different things. Okay. Exactly. And so then it, yeah. So then it'll have like your suggestions and then it'll have your recently added and then it starts organizing them by, um, category, which you cannot change yourself. That does frustrate me. I'd like to be able to rename those. That would make me happy. Yeah. Cause but Apple has, often uh, gets those names wrong. I don't like the names it picks when you yeah. put two icons together and it goes, Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> we call that zebra. It's like, they're what? supposed to learn no. and adapt, though. So, like, on how you use the apps, oh, they're supposed to true. always continuously update the order and sequence of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. So it'll it'll be things like utilities and social and productivity. And then one third thing that I really like, one more thing I really like about this is that you can swipe down from the top of the screen, and it's app stacks. They're listed. Your apps are listed alphabetically from that point on. So. You've got your cute little folders that they're in, if you want to call them folders, and then you pull down from the top of the screen, and now suddenly every single app you have on your phone is listed alphabetically. Oh, like so, Android. <laughs> so, oh, oh, boy, are we going to start that? <laughs> so if you, if you um, kind of remember the name of the app, but you can't totally remember it, you can just scroll through it. Or if you just want to see what you've got on your phone without having to do a search, you can just kind of... Choop, 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 choop. Looking for it on the list. So yeah. for for me, for um, organizing, it scratches my organizing itch. If you, um, like Renee was talking about, if you just dump it all on your phone and it doesn't matter because you use Spotlight anyway, that makes a lot of sense. You just use Spotlight anyway. It doesn't matter whether there's a, a such thing as an app library or well, not. Well, this won't stop for, you from continuing to do that. It oh, just, so here's exactly. my thing, though, because you can hide. So I just have tons of pages. Like I have like 10 app pages because I just keep downloading stuff and it keeps adding pages but once you have this set up you can go in and go into jiggle mode and hide all those pages like you can put the apps you really want on your first two pages because that's about the extent of human muscle memory and then just hide all the other pages and use the app library and that's what i started doing and now i don't feel guilty anymore it's like i only have two pages of apps what are you talking about <laughs> did you say yeah. jiggle mode oh. yeah full access thanks emily down deep below the surface. <laughs> down, down deep below the surface. Full access. Thanks, Emily. I just go into jiggle. Getting mode. jiggle with it. <laughs> down deep below the surface. Down, down deep below the surface. All right, you bastards. I knew you were going to create an animated GIF about this somehow, but we beat you to it. You hear me? Everyone step ahead. Oh my God. One of the Why did he run away? Oh, hey, we made it. Full access. Thanks, Emily. I just go into jiggle mode. Down deep below the surface. Down, down deep below the surface. Support for iOS apps. What the f***? Tell me more about that. If you see an original Mac, you know it's about to go down. We fixed theory this year. That is all I want to hear. Big props to this presenter for also doing the dancing part. Full access. <laughs> Thanks, Emily. I just go into jiggle mode. Down deep below the surface. Down, down deep below the surface. Full access. Thanks, Emily. I just go into jiggle mode. This is so good. Down deep below the surface. Down, down deep below the surface. Kevin Lynch. He's so is he cute. dancing because Flash is finally gone? Is, yes. Is this <laughs> he, was the guy, he was the guy who beat up Steve Jobs over that. Yep.
so and so, the next, the next video should be someone superimposing Flash's grave underneath the floor while he's dancing on it. Credit, of course, <laughs> to uh, t Jonathan Mann's Song A Day Man M A N N on Twitter for his just go into jiggle mode. I was waiting for, I was just waiting the whole show. I've been waiting. For somebody to say jiggle mode so I could play that. You're welcome, Leo. <laughs> Jesus, that was a secret word. <laughs> that was a that, secret word. You went $100. That, that's, a, that's a lot more important than anybody might be letting on. I really think that one of the, one of the security weaknesses of a phone is uh, how, ba how bad a job it makes. It, 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 how little help it gives you for weeding out apps you're just not using anymore. And mm. when you I – mean, there are two well, – this no. is – I, I, well, I, so I, I think so. Like, Apple right. added offloading off of um, right, offloading right. of apps that you don't use anymore. So if you haven't opened an app in a month, it it removes it from your phone, and then right. a um a, like a an icon remains there, but it's actually no longer on your phone. You have to actually re-download it from right. the app you store. Get a so shadow icon. You get a, exactly a shadow that, icon. That, yeah, that's ex exactly from right. Mordor. That's that's what I was going to say, only less succinctly and and, less, and with less detail. But yeah, it's all these things are. It's not just an inconvenience because the longer an app sticks around that you're not using, the more t t opportunities it has is, has to observe uh, connections, observe whatever, drain data, and also just confusion. There's not. It, it becomes a much bigger. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm looking around my office. I'm not speaking about this as a context for my life. <laughs> but the longer, the, the, the more t the, the 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 more behind you get in saying that okay. This icon is something I don't use anymore. I need to get rid of it so it's no longer cluttering up. You see, there's a reason why there's a backdrop here. And you I don't turn see that feature off because I carefully curate every single app on here. And I don't want it removing it anything. It is artisanal homepage. I don't Mr. like Ford the had. idea that I go to an app and I go, oh, it's no longer there. There's a little down arrow. i got to re-download that. That peeves but it, me. It was, it was Super Monkey Ball 1, Leo. You downloaded it 10 years ago. <laughs> no, I delete the old stuff. I don't have... I, well, Maybe you wouldn't even you wouldn't have to worry about that if you delete the old stuff. That won't happen to you. Yeah. So it's it has to be uh, no, something you haven't opened in a month. But sometimes it takes thirty two days. Sometimes there are apps that I haven't used in years, but I when I go to like it, I want to Like the Elf Yourself there. app you use once a year, right? Yeah. What's exactly. Going to to that? Exactly. Can we, but at least, at least get rid of the ones that don't support cut, copy, and paste. I think that that's a good threshold. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, that's you when it's that's cutting, fair. when it's copying now. You notice that when you go to paste something, it says Tweetbot is pasting uh, from the clipboard. So you, oh yeah, that's you, part you, of the the yeah. new continuity handoff thing. Is yeah. uh, is it'll let you know you've got something yes. there. Little drop down. That's nice. I love that. That's a yeah. And little things like is not it? taking over the whole screen when a call comes in or Siri is on. Although mm -hmm. some people were worried that you wouldn't lose features, but if you just pull down, you get the old screen back. It's like what Andy said. You're gaining things they're not taking anything Perfect. away they're just giving you the option of not having your like you're about to press something suddenly the phone's there and you hang up because that's exactly where the icon you were <laughs> about to tap when the call came now it's just at the top of the screen you can flick it away or you can pull it down and you have the same old experience so i do think you might be right about the ipad os and the uh the cursor because the other big feature they announced on ipad os is a return uh to newton scribble uh, oh, it's so God. good, though. Is it? No, you've tried it. So, see, this is yeah. my question is how good it, if it's good, then the idea that I've got the uh, pencil in my hand and I shouldn't have to pick up the keyboard just to type in a search term. That's cool. Yeah. It's good well, because unlike the watch version, it's not one letter at a time. Like the watch version is great because it's a watch, but you've got to do one letter at a time. It works well, but like it's 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 a watch. With this, you can just, at least in my experience, you start writing. And I am not a good writer. And I can barely fill out a check I've been typing for so yeah. long. But you start in the field. As long as you start in the field, it doesn't matter if you go a little bit out the field, way out the field. And it's I don't know exactly. I haven't been able to find out exactly how it parses like whether it's doing it live or it's waiting for word chunk or syllable chunks or line chunks but it's done a very good job with even terrible handwriting that okay. maybe i could not recognize because i have i still have ptsd from the newton uh and it <laughs> felt so much like the newton to me but if it could do a good job you can also you know it's got the newton gestures you scratch to delete yeah. you circle a word to select mm. it that's actually a really a uh, nice feature. Um, and, and then also you can be taking notes and then select the notes yeah, and copy yeah. them and then copy them as text and then paste that in late. 
later. I mean, all of that stuff is very interesting. It, if it, it makes works. Yeah, I really wanted from this. It's like it's making every yes. it's like it's no longer a question of what I'm doing. It just handles it. There's not like a text mode and a, and a note. It's just I am giving you what I want. Please take it and do everything I want with it. OK. Yes. And I that, love that it that I can draw one of those crappy shorthand stars <laughs> and it turns into a beautiful let me see i have to scroll back up to get it to do it again i could draw one of them crappy stars and it turns into a real star i love that shape <laughs> recognition so all of this is funny all of this really was supposed to be part of newton uh, yeah. and i'd be very if i'll be very happy if it works i think that's Spe good. speaking of which R renee i i don't i haven't installed it on my ipad yet what happens when you write egg freckles <laughs> I have not tried right writing now. egg frickles, but I will go over after. <laughs> this is this is a, a classic uh, a Newton joke, right? Yes, it was, it was a it was a, a, a the when the Newton first came out and the handwriting did not work very well. Doonesbury Strip did a joke about how yeah. every time he tries to write something, he gets not something else, and one of the things is egg freckles. And they <laughs> were duly, duly chast, chastised by a Pulitzer Prize winning cartoonist. The Newton team put an Easter egg that would cause that the panel of that strip to come up. Oh, that's under hysterical! Certain. You're kidding! Yeah. I didn't know I'll that. Try that. So here's the original. Uh, joke. I'm writing a test. And this, I lived with the Newton. Uh, he says, I'm writing a test sentence. I am fighting atomic sentry. I am writing a test sentence. Eating is ri Ian is writing a taste sensation. I am writing a test sentence. I am writing a test sentence. Catching on? Egg freckles. I love it. Can I can I can I tell you a story about I I just got I just got my uh, the the new message pad. Uh, I was at a like was shortly before uh, Neil Gaiman and uh, David Mack huh. were doing a signing at Com uh, at Comicopia in Kenmore Square, uh, and so I had him like in addition to signing my sign my Sandman had him like sign like the oh, give give me your autograph like on my Newton message pad. But I'd forgotten to like turn the text recognition off, so it tried to it kept trying to like uh, text recognize. What he was saying, uh, what was, oh, no. his signature, and, and when he, he got confused for a second, he said, my God, it's it's like consulting the Oracle at Delphi, and he kept like writing all over and over again just to see what would happen. And I still have that, I still have that Newton, and I have the pleasure of being the pride of being able to say that I own like an original piece of like Neil Gaiman writing that even he has never read. Wow, <laughs> that's awesome. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and that's I gonna be my retirement fund, baby. <laughs> Uh, so, okay, good. So you use it and you say it's pretty reliable. I'll be interested to see. I, yeah. What it does mean, it's really interesting, is the variety of affordances available on an iPad Pro. You can use the yeah. keyboard, the trackpad, your finger, your pen, and they all you kind of work. scan with the camera. And I've already noted uh, in my own use, because I love the Magic Keyboard and I've been using it a lot, that it's very natural to go back and forth from touch to keyboard to trackpad. It isn't, yeah. I think it, part of that is not that it projects weird, forward. There's no so like it's not behind the number row and it's not back behind the screen. Like it's a really weird yeah. difference, but because it's floating, it's like just that it's much there. closer to me. Yeah, maybe. And, I, and I, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like immediately right there. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, there's no cognitive load going from one yeah. to the other. It's just very natural. So I actually I'm very pleased at how that's working out, and I look forward to egg freckles. Yeah. I mean. Uh, Scribble, scribble. I like I, I like the fact that the, the the first most significant step forward for iPad OS in 2020 was making it work a little bit more like a desktop by adding trackpad yeah. support. The second most important thing, in my opinion, was the fact that they made it work more like a pen based computer, which is what it actually is. Right. Is that that's always it's, it's never really annoyed me that I couldn't do like I couldn't do handwriting as easily as that. But it always felt like, oh, there's there's there is a Lot, there is a box in this device that says I owe you one completely intuitive handwriting to text <laughs> engine. And now finally that block has been shaded in. There was a real push starting last year or the year before with the accessibility team and then moving beyond them to say that every form of input should be a first class citizen on oh, every device. And obviously there's like it has to be a trackpad on a Mac for touch, but they really want to make sure that if you're typing, if you're using a, if you're using a pointer, all of those are equally valid ways of interacting with the device. That's and you can a, see they're sort of fighting their way there. There's such a huge change from the original days of the Macintosh where there were no keyboard shortcuts at all. You just yeah. it was or like arrow if, keys. If, you, yeah, <laughs> if you want to do something, you better damn well pick up that mouse and do it. Because yeah. <laughs> and, and it's funny because I feel like Apple's evolved in a lot of ways. For instance, and I I wonder, and I mentioned this on iOS today earlier. If Johnny Ive had actually kind of created some artificial walls about what 
user interface could and couldn't do that now that he's gone are gone forever. Things like that full screen call coming in thing, eh, we don't really need to take over the screen. I think Johnny loved modality. I think Johnny wanted every app to take up the whole screen, no other things going on, no background stuff. If you're doing Siri, you're damn well better be doing Siri and not looking at your calendar. And that was, I feel like that, maybe it wasn't Johnny, maybe it was, who knows who it was. The team, but, yeah. The team. But, but now that Johnny's gone, I notice that, that they're going back to the original days of Apple, uh, going back to Jeff Raskin, who said you should never have anything be modal. Every it, it, you want to be able to do anything at any time. No, no dialogue box should take over the screen ever. That was the original you know, Macintosh. I would, touch. I would love it because they have the new Siri that um, has a compact UI as well, and you just say something and it pops up a notification. I would love to be able to grab that notification, pull it into a like if it's a rest, show me the recipe for pancakes. Grab that, slide it right into a widget, and have it persist <laughs> there until I'm finished making my pancakes. I, would, <laughs> yeah. I, I can't wait for all of those things to <laughs> meld together until it's just it's what I want when I want it. Well, and that's yeah. why I'm glad what? that Apple's not being dogmatic. That, Absolutely. That maybe they're starting to open up a little bit to other ways of doing things. Yeah, I, I, that, I, I think that I, I don't. I don't for one second think that Johnny Ive or Johnny Ive's philosophy did anything but good things for uh, for Apple devices. I do think that it is marked by a real dogmatic approach that mm -hmm. if you put less fewer things on the screen that's mm -hmm. always better than putting more things on the screen. And it always made me think about uh, the. There were five uh, like five commandments behind the development of uh, when they were develop, developing the Python language. And one of them was that uh, complex is better than, excuse me, com, com, uh, I, I might be getting it wrong, but uh, it, I, I think it was uh, uh, complex is better than complicated. And that's like number four on the list, meaning that we don't want something to be really, really complex, but we would much rather have something that has a series, has to be done by a series of steps that are obvious that you can easily work through than something that you are just absolutely sitting there saying, I have no idea how this works. And this is, you you, you, you illustrated one of the biggest uh, examples for me that the, I'm doing something, minding my own business on my phone, and then suddenly the screen turns into a call answer thing. And I was right in the middle of something. And my first instinct is, how do I get rid of this screen filling thing? Even if it means that, well, here's a button that will get, that will uh, dump the call, even though I don't necessarily want to dump the call. I just want to get out of this caveman, like uh, genetic fight or flight reflex that this, this uh, completely modal thing has put yes. me into. Yes. So I hope, I hope that the new design ethos takes all, everything that was good about, uh, about the Johnny Ive uh, uh, era and understands that maybe it's okay for us to put extra things on the screen and maybe we don't necessarily need uh, there, there are times when the UI should shout instead of whisper and maybe have a better piece of balance for that this is it's it's really everything I, I'm, I'm saying yet again that everything I saw yesterday got me really excited about iOS and iPad OS and uh, Mac OS and and watch OS as well but I don't have a watch OS because I'm an Android person <laughs> so the, the the way that notifications or the way that answering a phone or using Siri works in iOS 14 and iPadOS 14 is actually how it works on Mac. Right. So right. when I saw yeah. that, I thought, oh, well, this is just them making it. Yeah. They're, they're making the all of the, the user interfaces a little bit more in line with each other. Because what are you going to do? Make your entire screen, <laughs> you know, fade out when you're doing, right. when you're using Siri on a <laughs> Mac. So they needed to figure out ways to combine the design language. And to me, that was, that was, that was it, that it wasn't, Maybe it's just that. I, don't, I don't know that it's like a, you know, a modal this or that. I think it's just, they thought, well, we're trying to make these all look the same. So we can either make a screen, have Siri cover the entire thing, or we can bring that notification version of Siri over to the iOS and iPad OS. Yeah. There was a joke that because Apple knew that the the shutdowns were going to cause significant delays with a lot of the hardware, they're like, what can we do? Let's just find everything that every nerd on Twitter is upset about and give it to them <laughs> in June. Well, and that'll distract yeah. them long enough that we can ship them Pay no attention. Yeah, why do you Me think no hardware? You think that that had to do with supply chain issues or no, just they really didn't want to like distract? If, I, I think it's not just a distraction thing, but if everyone had to be there for WWDC, it would be much easier to yeah. show demos for new products, to seed review units, to do all of those things. But with nobody actually having to be there, they could take the time and focus on the software. And we don't know, like, 
July, the week of, the first week of July could be a Mac. The second right. week of July could be right. AirPods. The, second, the third, like they could, they've shown the capacity to have sequential concussive product releases just by dropping, you know, pressers and, and doing virtual conferences. So I think it, the, the lack of having everybody there removed the need to do everything all at once. They did imply air tags. They talked about find my finding keys. <laughs> and, and they said it was open opening, to uh, developers and third parties. Yeah, they're opening it up to third parties, which I think is honestly is probably part to do with companies that were accusing Apple Tile. of uh, Tile's CEO yeah. <laughs> testified before Congress saying Apple's killing us. Yeah, so this this probably in part was to kind of mitigate that that Maybe. issue, but also setting the stage for the future of their version that will be coming soon. It's, because if it's already built into the software, right. they've already got that coming. And then they're faced with, you know, companies that are saying, uh, you know, you're, you're monopolizing the the software, then they could go, oh, well, in that case, yeah. here, we'll take this box that Spox this says you can do it too. And then we're not in trouble when we start selling a product just like it. Yeah, that, that's super way, important. Because let's not, privately. Let's not Let's let's not forget that all 50 state attorney generals last year announced that they're on a multi-year campaign to put tech companies on notice for anti-competitive practices and for basically to make sure that they can't do exactly what they want to do without making sure that uh, states state laws and state in, uh, citizen interests aren't in line with that. So as as uh, obviously Apple seems less vulnerable to a lot of these antitrust things and obviously Google or Facebook uh, or these are a lot of other companies, but that doesn't mean mean that they when they're planning all this whatever is a gray area that apple finds they're going to want to make sure they're they're on the right side of the line for that let's take a little break there is a lot of other apple news but i think we've done a very good job and i don't want to if i've left <laughs> anything out if i left you can you can scream now or we'll take a break and go to our picks of the week Okay. I can't even there's think so of it all we'll because there's so finish. much. So much. <laughs> so much. We haven't even talked about the whole home slide presentation they did. Oh. I mean, there's just so much. There's mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. Well, we'll yeah. have stuff to talk about next week, too. And the tvOS stuff. I mean, yeah. there's just well, there's too much. Yeah, we can well, see the that. Was there is one cool. interesting question. There's a tiny blob at the bottom of the tvOS page that says 4K YouTube is coming oh, yeah. to uh, tvOS, but it doesn't say, oh, we've agreed to support VP9 or, oh, Google's finally doing H.265 or my beautiful dream that everyone's realizing AV1 is the future and it'll just be on everything. But I think that was also a big thing on a lot of nerd checkboxes was their 4K YouTube. We did think there would be a new uh, Apple TV perhaps, right? But again, there will I be. <laughs> there will be someday. Yeah. I just, I'm it's waiting because mine's fritzing and I'm ready. Malibu Stacy is going to get a new hat. Don't worry. <laughs> you know, found, just that foundation TV series alone requires. What'd you, you know, think of that? <laughs> they showed a trailer from Apple TV. They I'm get, nervous that it was so action-y. Like, because yeah. foundation isn't very action-y to me, but I'm wondering if that's how they sell it is by they're showing selling all the They're selling it as Star Wars too is what they're selling it yeah. at. They clearly, mm -hmm. they even mentioned... You know, I mean, it's very Star Warsy. Wait, wait. The, I the wouldn't. Good Star I wouldn't Wars blame Apple for that, though. That's, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, you know, I mean, tr like people win awards for the way they edit trailers, so the, right. it's not Apple's fault that it had such a, a such a action heavy spin on it. So I think that's just the, the way the person team. who made that. Right. <laughs> In a world where the future is known <laughs> and the empire strikes back wait a minute no that's another world. between that and dune i'm just I'm like the little sci-fi child in me is, is just squeeing mm. back and forth you know yeah. i have the exact opposite reaction every single time and you should too if you mention if you like dune uh it, that uh there's the, nothing can live up to your imagination in those books no and Foundation I read is that book every year. perfect. And Dune is perfect. Yeah. And there was yeah. no point in trying to bring it to life on the screen because you just can't make it yeah. as good as you can imagine it, I think. And, and Hamilton's going to be on Apple TV, Leo, so I'll be yeah. happy. That was <laughs> written for the stage, so it's okay. That's, well, that's coming but, uh, soon, isn't it? July 3rd, Apple, baby. July 3rd. Whoa, yeah. yeah. I, you just reminded me. Yeah. So I've never that's, seen it, so this will be a new experience oh, yeah. for me. Brand new. Now you know, know it's new, right? You listen to anything. it over and what? over again. I know. I know this. I know what it is. I know that I know why it's a big deal, but I've never delved well, into the soundtrack is, or anything. So this, this is, is going to be a brand debate. new experience. I, for me. Before I saw it, I knew it by heart. And in fact, a lot of the people in the theater with me knew it by heart. You could just watch. Everybody's going, oh, 
<laughs> but uh, what do you think, Renee? Should she should she get the soundtrack now and get to know it better? I would. I don't know. I've never seen it, but I've listened to the soundtrack. Oh, repeatedly. Yeah. Okay. So um, I, I think you'll enjoy. It. It's just so good. I think it doesn't matter. Like it's it is transcendently good. Yeah. Uh, and you'll enjoy it regardless. I I yeah. liked it that I knew the soundtrack before I saw it, but that's I how I did it. So. I think it could go either way because I think on like I like the reason part of the reason that I haven't listened to the soundtrack is that I kind of want to go into it with a pure mind. That's probably and true. Not just yeah. have the music memorized, but actually watch this oh, play. But ha so, knowing the soundtrack, and I'm sitting in the theater, <laughs> and you hear dum da 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 dum 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 dum. It's like my head exploded. But yeah. you can yeah. presumably watch this over and over again. So, like, the first That's viewing true. is fresh, and then the 20th viewing, okay. you're like, oh, good point. Da, da, da. I only um, had one shot to see it in, on Broadway. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That's I'm, a good I'm, point. I, I'm, with, I'm with you, Lori, though. I got, when I when somebody passed me a link to a bootleg video of the original cast, like, Whoa. shot from a balcony, I, I kind of had to download it while the link was still good, but I have not seen it because I knew <laughs> that I, I had heard early on yeah, that they were planning on. Yeah, do, that, that they're planning on recording like the yeah. actual stage production for a future release, yeah. and that's always been my. Do I spend when when someone offered me a chance to like buy one of their uh, their uh, uh, their extra tickets, and I'm like, ah, it's it, it wasn't so much the three hundred fifty dollars, it was the, but I know that at some point I will be able to like watch the. I kind of wanted my first viewing to be the original stage performance yeah. for even though even though the people on the tour are yeah. great, they are they are Broadway caliber, they are Broadway performers it was like uh, i'm not gonna say anything because i don't want to yeah yeah don't i spoil it <laughs> I, I, I understand keep, there are things there are things about shut. the staging that are they're a wonderful surprise even for people who have like I, know the soundtrack yeah part, you so can I'm, know this the funny thing is it, there's no spoken word so if you know the soundtrack you know the whole show oh but see there, then i definitely don't want to be spoiled yeah and the, yeah. but but there are definitely i didn't see it and once i saw it now when i hear the soundtrack i see it I don't know. Oh, that's. But also, if you've never studied, like I, I didn't take American history in school, obviously. So, like a lot of the characters and stuff were new to me anyway. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who's this guy? You never heard of Hercules Mulligan? What the hell? Okay. <laughs> I barely heard of Alexander Hamilton. Uh, I mean, it's like, well, I think you, you were not alone. Or... A lot of Americans thought, well, he's the guy in the five dollar yeah. bill. I don't know what did he do. He was a treasurer, he's one of our right? best presidents ever. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. Uh, all right, let's take a break. We're going to get your picks of the week in just a little bit as we wrap things up on the most exciting week for Apple in years. I mean, <laughs> seriously. Now, in here, we have excellent air. And uh, it's very important to me that we have excellent air at home, too. The molecule is a unique air purifier especially for people who are living or working in offices that are sealed indoor air can be five times worse than outdoor air according to the epa that molecule is the solution it's not just an innovation on existing technology but it's an, it's literally a different way of purifying air it's core technology is called pico that's photoelectrochemical oxidation and what it does it actually destroys pollutants in the air like viruses, like bacteria, like mold, like chemicals, tiny little particles. It doesn't just collect them on filters. It destroys them, protecting homes, businesses, medical spaces. So you know they're destroying the pollutants and providing clean air. And by the way, there is a new molecule I want to tell you about. Molecular air purifiers are designed for big rooms. This is a giant room. I don't know how many square feet, John, do you think? This is, uh, I mean, you can go up to 600 square feet with a molecule. The Air Mini is for the little one. 250 square feet. There's a new Air Mini Plus that helps protect small rooms with a particle sensor and auto protect mode, which adjusts the fan speed based on the amount of particulates. And the new Molecule Air Pro RX, this is FDA approved as a 501k class 2 medical device. It's intended for medical purposes to destroy bacteria and viruses in the air. We're spending a lot more time at home these days, and we're probably a little bit more aware of how important it is to keep the air clean molecules pico technology meets the performance requirements in the fda guidance for use in helping reduce the risk of exposure believe it or not to sars cov 19 uh covid 19 uh dash 2 the covid 19 virus in healthcare settings there's independent testing you can see it on the molecule site shown to reduce concentrations of ms2 which is a uh, something they use for testing it's a proxy virus for sars cov 2 
by over 99.9% in one hour. Now, this doesn't mean you can, you know, you don't have to stop washing your hands or anything else or social distancing, but it is an extra layer of virus protection in your spaces. And now you can have it in your home. Molecules technology and filtration systems have been tested and verified by independent third-party labs. For the whole home and beyond, Pico technology is a miracle. And it has really saved us. The, read the read the white papers uh, available on the uh, on the site, and I think you'll get some sense of what kind of a wonderful device this is. You get ten percent off your first molecule right now at molecule.com. We have three of them, and I'm thinking I should really get this new Air Pro RX. That looks really good. Um, maybe for the studio, John, because you know we we share this air. Enter the code MACBREAK10 at checkout. M-O-L-E-K-U-L-E, Molecule.com. Enter the code MACBREAK10. Now more than ever, you need Molecule. Uh, thank you, Molecule. Now let's get our picks of the week. We'll start with you, Renee Ritchie. So mine, you know, aside from everything that we were just I don't know, tsunamied with yesterday. Uh, <laughs> a little earlier, well, actually last week, the latest Fantastical um, update came out. Oh. Now, some of the news from WWC is that you'll be able to choose your own mail and browser app in iOS and iPad OS. You won't be able to choose your own calendar app, at least not yet. They said that the browser and mail were the most popular requests they'd gotten. But I hold out hope. And either way, uh, Fantastical, just in general, is still the fastest way I've ever found to get stuff into and out of a calendar. So much so that I've told the uh, one of the developers, Michael Simmons, that I hate him because he makes me use calendars, which I really don't <laughs> want to use, but they're just so easy. The update that they just put out, I think it's 3.1, is all work from home sort of stuff. And uh, the cool thing about it is like, yeah, it'll it'll handle Zoom links, it'll it'll handle all these different conference call links that we're, we're frankly befuddling a lot of like, I would just get these invitations from people and I'd have to mentally parse, oh, it's a Zoom link. Let me cut and paste that in. Oh, this is a Google, what is it, Hangouts or Meet or Hangouts Meet or Meeting Hangouts or it, it was a lot to deal with. And in typical Fantastical fashion, this just parses all of that. And I don't really have that much to think about anymore. And they've done some other nice stuff like um, they've, they've revved the proposed email uh, system where you can sort of go back and forth to find a time that works with all of you and they have timed calendar sets. But in general, I think it's it's super cool that companies are thinking about the ways in which their products are being used differently when you're not at home and you're not at work, but you're working from home and sort of architecting to fill in uh, those design spaces. And this is a really nice example of that. Good. I already, I you know, I'm a subscriber, so I presume I yeah. get it automatically, right? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan. As, as yeah, I think it works you so all well. No, love my fantastic Al. Uh, Andy Anako, pick of the week. Uh, well, of course, uh, now that we're do, uh, doing a starting the transition from Intel to ARM, I thought it was finally about time to buy myself a Power PC Mac, uh, and I went on eBay and I got this. <laughs> iMac, iMac G4. Oh my <laughs> that's God! Been, that's been on my wish list for a very long time because I think it's one of the most beautiful computers ever made. I agree. Uh, probably also one of the, I'm definitely up with the uh, G4 Cube as one of the prettiest uh, Macs ever mm -hmm. made. Uh, it's uh, it had because of because one of the things that was so great about it was that it had this articulating arm that was not just hey look you can adjust it a little bit and it makes it look like a Pixar lamp but the idea that you can have this on your desktop and then like if you if you're standing up because you need to check something it will work in a standing up mode if your kids are using your the computer they can pull it down and use it in a pulling down mode uh, it's really really stable uh, I say that because I've been trying to hold this with one hand and that base is like 80 pounds so I'm going to put it down now uh, but what are you going to do it with it? Is it going to be a fish tank? What are you, what are you uh, You're not going to use it, are you? Uh, I am I am going to get it back up to speed. It has uh, we're, we are talking about 700 megahertz G4 processor here with 128 megabytes of RAM. Uh, it, it'll run it'll run Tiger <laughs> megabytes, uh, I'll, I'll, kids. That's one eighth of a gigabyte. 
I'll, I'll, ad I'll admit that I bought it for its decorative yeah, it's uh, functions. Beautiful. However, I am going to get it running on uh, on Tiger uh, just to see how far I can go with it. If not, I can probably put Linux on it, but that seems like a sacrilege. So I'll probably just keep it as it's, it is going to be like a permanent. There's there's like a, a second desk I have in the living room, uh, and there's probably going to be point of pride placement on that desk. And I'll who knows? I'll probably I can use it to play music. I could use it to you know noodle around places. It's it's just such a pretty thing and. And because it's not like the 20th 20th anniversary Mac, uh, it's, I, I bought it for about I think it was like seventy five really? eighty dollars oh, plus wow. fifty bucks shipping wow. for that. Oh, and wow. for that amount of money, it was like I'm not going to do this kind of crap every single month, but I'm definitely going to do that today because I've always I've always wanted one. <laughs> it, it was one of those things where. I got when when it came out in like 2000, uh, 96, 97, the first one. Uh, this one is a, is a two thousand two model, by the way. Uh, but I had it for uh, for a couple of months on loan, and I just hated to pack it up and send yeah, it back because I was just enjoying device. it so much. Also, also the the pa the repacking was a very very complicated affair, as I recall. <laughs> but yeah, there's there's there are just some Macs that are so beautiful that even as a static object, I feel as though they more than make up for the amount of oxygen that they displace in the room that you've set them up in. <laughs> Tom Nardi on Hackaday does show you how mm. you could put an Intel NUC in there, but then you'd have to run Windows. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's got to be a Raspberry it, Pi project you can use yeah. for it. But you want to yeah. run Mac on it. You can get somebody can, tells. Well, Chat room says you can get up to ten point five point five. Mm. That might be there, worse. That's that's without. I think I think there are tweaks you can do in order to get to run uh, run all kinds of cool stuff. I've I feel as though my my uh, my radar is still open for like if I'm at the if the MIT flea market ever reopens again, <laughs> uh, it's canceled through July. They yeah. might have one in mm -hmm. August. But but it's uh, but if I do have uh, have the ability to buy another one super super cheap, I think that's the one that I'll play with getting it running something else or gutting it out just using it as an enclosure for something else because there's just some. I feel as though the the Mac interface, especially the Tiger interface running on this, is kind of like two parts of the same expression. And uh, it just makes me happy to have this thing on my desk. It's pretty cool. It is pretty. Pretty cool. Yeah. It's such a beautiful... Remember Steve Jobs, and in the biography they talk about it, spent a lot of effort on that arm. He really... Yeah. That, he was so proud of that. It's never going to... Is it still worked? Does it still hold the screen it's still, up? It's per still perfect. That's that was, what he said. It's so, it's so perfectly balanced. Uh, and this is the this is the place where if you if you were to buy like a Windows machine that had that kind of idea, it would probably work fine for the first three or four months. But then it would... Uh, the, as some engineer at some point would say, well, I put it, when I put it into this, one, this particular position, it lowers itself after, by about a half an inch or an inch after I let go of it. Okay, that's close enough. This one, though, you put it in whatever angle you want to put it in, it will it stays exactly in that angle. That's and moving cool. it is absolutely effortless. Yeah. It's not like you have to <laughs> unscrew something and go. It's just such a. I, it's. I think this is a uh, almost at the perfect intersection for Apple of form and function. Uh, you, you rarely see that kind of perfection in any kind of manufacturing, and I think you, I'll be damned. You you definitely see it here. So how old how old is brain, that? That came out in two thousand two. So now we know eighteen years later. That arm still mm. still holds. My, they my said it would. My brain says you should be able to throw a Mac Mini right in the bottom. Like you should be able to hold it and throw yeah. the Mac Mini so oh, yeah. hard that it goes right to the bottom. And <laughs> actually, you're Mac. right. <laughs> Boom. Actually, you know, actually, I bet if I bet if you took a Mac Mini apart, because this this does have like a sliding out DVD tray, you could have have the tray slide up, put the Mac Mini motherboard in there, close the tray, <laughs> and then have a fully like at least an Intel based uh, machine. Or like a sonic or screwdriver makes it just work, like something like that. The other thing <laughs> I'm impressed. I could never afford the twenty inch. It looks like you got the big one. Mm. No, no, this is this is like the original. I think it's the fifteen inch oh, screen. Okay. Okay. I got. I, I plugged. It looks so big Mac when you held it up. <laughs> oh, because it's so beautiful. Because, yeah, and so I'm sorry that I didn't. Let me see if I can very very quickly. Oh no, I can't. Don't okay. If I if I had, I, I would. I wish that I'd remember to like zoom out on this thing. But it's beautiful. Like I said, it's it's just a beautiful get, beautiful yeah. object. Yeah. You could nice. get a Mac Mini and put a Pro Display XDR right on top of it, and it'll be a similar aesthetic. <laughs> Not as cheap. But. Uh, the arm is a little is more expensive than the whole thing. Uh, <laughs> Lori Gill, what should I buy this week? Well, uh, get out your wallet because uh -oh. I think you might actually want this one. Oh, Though you do already it. have a really nice iPad Pro case because you have the I have magic the magic keyboard. keyboard, yeah. But Nomad. Who makes I love wonderful, stuff. beautiful leather goods? They're making iPad Pro cases oh. now, 
And they made a rugged folio Ooh, that is absolutely it's gorgeous. It's pretty. Yeah. It's, pretty. it's real pretty. Yeah. Not with a keyboard, just uh, just a case. Nope, it's just a just a folio um, front and back though, which is really nice to to have that case again that has covers the front and the back. It has very very similar design aesthetic as uh, Apple's folio, so it you know folds into a triangle so that you have kind of the angled pad. And it has the back casing to cover and protect the back side of it. And it's made with that gorgeous, gorgeous uh, leather that patinas over time. And uh, yeah, this is their first um, iPad case. So this is pretty exciting. You can get you can get one to match your iPhone. <laughs> Ooh, well, you know, what? actually, I'd like to get a case. I was thinking I, I miss my wallet uh, cases. I bet they make a nice... Mm. Uh, I wonder, I should look for the 11. I think see. they have the, um, uh, not a folio, but a um, backside case, I think, yeah. uh, you know, a sleeve on sleeve the backside. on the back, yeah. I think so, I yeah. really love their stuff. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I, I looked at their website and they said, they're selling medical supplies. What? And it turns yeah, out that I now bought. they've branched out to masks and mm -hmm. uh, hand sanitizers and cleaners, all the stuff you can't get anywhere, even mm -hmm. gloves. Yeah. Yeah. I And a lot of the stuff that they do, um, when you buy it, a portion of it goes to help support them making them for um, the medical industry. Nice. So they, they pivoted to specifically make things for the medical industry. And because they were making things for the medical oh. industry, they decided to open it up to us to buy. And then a portion of that would be going to support their cause to make medical supplies for, for the medical industry. Well, so, yeah, it's, it's a neat little thing they started doing. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, very nice. Thank you, Lori Gill. I think I can resist because I love my magic keyboard so much. I know, I know that it's it's hard to think of ever doing anything but using the magic keyboard now that it now that it exists. <laughs> my iPad is like a hundred times more useful now, and as soon as I get iOS iPad OS fourteen, I'm gonna be really ready to go. I can't wait. <laughs> ready to rock. Ready to rock. Lori Gill, you'll find her at imore.com. She's uh, Managing editor there. She's at Appleholic on the Twitter. She won't find her band Sickburn performing anywhere soon, but... Nope. Uh, you could do a living <laughs> room show, maybe. Oh, yeah. this, is, this is this is this is your opportunity to do your uh, to do your Sergeant Pepper Abbey Road face. It, you've oh, given up touring oh, yeah, we, because there's so many people you can't even hear yourselves, so that you 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 create your own studio sound. So uh, my my significant other and my oh. next door neighbor started. I, I, I might have already mentioned this, but we started a quarantine band. We oh, we wrote nine songs and recorded an album. Oh, so, nice. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> We've already got that. Going. We got the quarantine band. We're getting the yeah. quarantine band back together. Yeah. Thank you. So we're already much. talking about our second album that we're going to wow. record. We haven't even finished awesome. mixing down the first one. Quarantine's good. Singer it makes burn. you productive. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mr. Andy Anako, uh, WGBH coming up. Uh, yep, uh, Thursday uh, at uh, I think at 1:20 p.m. Uh, obviously, I'll be one a day and a half smarter about what happened to WWDC. Uh, so <laughs> look forward to that. Uh, as usual, tune in to wgbhnews.org to stream it either live or later on in the day. And here's your, here's the white here's here's, oh, here's the white shot. Oh, isn't that there beautiful? You go. Oh, That's just so jealous. Uh, so cute. Yeah. Yes. It looks like it's uh, it could come alive and give you a hug. Yeah. Well, it's so cute. There was which came Actually, first, the uh, the Luxo lamp in the Pixar opening or that? Because oh, Luxo by by a long shot. So it's kind of but modeled there, after Luxo, I guess. Yes. I must, I, I must have been inspired a little bit by that. Yeah. But all but also the right there. Yeah. There have there have been people who have like at least in the day they've actually created like a motorized <laughs> version of this who can actually like articulate <laughs> itself. But yeah, this should this should you could spray paint this gold and this would be a really good industry award for somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't it? You guys, I can't believe this. I want well, a Mackie. I want to thank God. <laughs> um, Renee Ritchie at the eponymous the YouTube site. YouTube.com slash Renee Ritchie. It's going well? Yeah, I mean, well, you know, it's, the, the, the whole uh, shelter in place thing has been everybody watching, but not not everyone uh, you know, able to support in the ways they traditionally have. But it feels like we're slowly working our way out of the darkness and into, 
and into the light. <laughs> so, uh, and it's, it's a lot of fun right now. I just did a huge deep dive on iOS 14. And uh, as soon as I finish this, I'm going to edit my even huger deep dive into Apple Silicon on the Mac. So I'm, I'm having a blast. Oh, I can't wait. I, I've been waiting for that <laughs> one. That's going to be really interesting. Yeah. Renee, Renee could, could you make sure you have that published at least an hour before Thursday the next at episode. 1 p.m. Eastern time? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I might need to take a look Save at that. Save me some time. I miss the John Syracuse <laughs> sure. days, the 100,000 word articles. But uh, Renee's going to. He had this, such a great tweet. He said, like, as soon as you see Tim Cook with a vintage Mac on stage, you know that some stuff's about to yep, come down. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was right. He was right. Um, and what was I going to ask you, Renee? I don't yeah, remember. Pick of the week? week? Did you get a pick yet? Oh, you already did that. Yes. Oh, sorry. You already Fantastic. did that. I count. Sorry. Oh, whew. he started way back years ago <laughs> so did this show years ago thank you everybody for being here i hope you've enjoyed it we do mac break weekly every tuesday around about 11 a.m pacific 2 p.m eastern time that would be about 17 1800 utc something like that you can watch live or listen live at twit.tv slash live uh, you can also get on-demand versions from the website twit.tv slash mbw there's a YouTube version as well, but I think the best thing to do would be subscribe in your favorite podcast application. And that way, you'd get it. it would be automatically provided to you the minute it's available. All right, now, everybody get back to jiggle mode <laughs> because break time is over. Hey folks, I am Micah Sargent, co-host of Tech News Weekly right here on the Twit Network. Yes, Tech News Weekly is a show we do every week, Jason Howell and myself, where we talk to people who are making and a break in the tech news. That's right, it's journalists, it's inventors, it's app makers, it's everybody who's bringing the tech news in a given week. It's all the stuff you want to know about in bite-sized chunks in a fantastic package. So be sure to subscribe. It's twit.tv slash TNW.